Boom. Howdy, folks. Anthony Johnson here today, co-founder of the Red Man Group, founder of 21 Studios, 21 Convention, 22 Convention, 21 University, uh, 10,000 other things on the internet, Patriot Convention, all kinds of cool stuff. You guys know me as Anthony Dream Johnson, and I've been doing this for 16 years now, uh, the channel itself anyway. Now, on today's episode of the Red Man Group, episode 170, this is a world-exclusive interview with uh, two of the uh, main faces and features uh, of the recent viral documentary, Amazing Disgrace by Church Militant. Today on the show, we're going to have Joe Enders. He was basically the face of the documentary who kind of led the viewers through it. And he was also the interviewer in person uh, throughout the documentary, interviewing uh, the victims and the, uh, the accusers in the documentary that exposed Reverend Jesse Lee Peterson as a male groomer and homosexual super predator. So uh, we also have on the show today, Pat Rooney, who worked with Jesse Lee Peterson for, I think, 15 to 20 years uh, at the Bond uh, nonprofit organization in California. So throughout the show, I'm talking to them, interviewing them, asking them questions, having them address uh, some of the facts of the documentary, the uh, controversy surrounding it, and some of the questions people have. I will take uh, good questions throughout the show from the comments if you're not just some jerk and you actually have a sincere question. And I have a lot of mail questions as well. Now, before we get into the show, quick shout out to our sponsor, which is our own event, 21 Summit, the uh, Woodstock of the Manosphere, Super Bowl of the Manosphere, coming up again, 16-year anniversary, this October 14th to 17th in Orlando, Florida. Some of our speakers have lightning eyes up here, obviously, as you can see on Mount Olympus, Jack Donovan, Coach Greg Adams, Richard Grannon, myself, Elliot Hulse, Pastor Michael Foster, and many more speakers. 21 Summit is actually a total summit with three individual conferences or conventions inside of it, including the 21 Convention for Men, we're going to make men alpha again, the 21 Convention Patriarch Edition, or the Patriarch Convention as we now call it, which is basically for fathers and husbands at a later and more family-focused stage of life. And finally, the 22 Convention for Women, you have to be a birthing person that has periods and uh, all that kind of good stuff to go to that event. Uh, you cannot be a male. So we got these three events at the same time. They all happen uh, Friday through Monday. That's October 14th to 17th, pretty much all day, about 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. each day. It's an amazing, super professional event. Come on out, get tickets. And right now you can bring a friend free. And through Sunday night, you can save $1,000 off of your ticket, a regular ticket or your VIP ticket. And there's also a virtual ticket to watch at pay-per-view uh, for the men's event only not for the fathers of the women, but we do have it available virtual for the 21 convention. Get tickets, bring a friend free. I hope to see you there, meet me in person. All of our speakers is pretty awesome. There's gonna be almost 30 speakers total between all the events. And it's a super awesome time, I love it. It's my life's work and I'm really good at it. And it will help you take action and kick ass in life and stop being a beta male. Now, without further ado, in this uh, three minute ad for my own event, Please let me welcome to the show, Mr. Pat Rooney and Joe Ender. Thanks hey, for having us. Everybody. Hello, Joseph. Good to see hey, you. Hey, how are you, Patrick? Good to see you again. Very good. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate both of your guys' time coming on the show today. Um, the past, uh, just to lay it out there very simply, the past week for me as an entrepreneur and as a YouTuber and someone who knew Jesse and was a business associate to some degree of Jesse, we filmed, for example, my company, his Bond Men's Conference 2021 last year in Orlando as well as him being a speaker at our events that was pretty popular. Uh, the last week for me, from my position and my perspective personally, has been really wild. And I really appreciate both of you guys' time coming on my show today to answer some of my, my questions, questions of the viewers. I have personal friends watching right now who also knew Jesse, and uh, they'll have probably some good comments for us and questions in the chat. And also just the work, you guys both deserve a huge shout out for the courage and the hard work and the tenacity it took to step up and produce that documentary and in the different uh, roles that each of you had. And I want to ask you each about that and how it all developed, but sincerely, thank you for what you did. And I know it took a lot of courage and a lot of people who are upset about the truth of what's come out are not taking, uh, they're not observing that correctly and it's serious. And that's what has been frustrating for me is that a lot of people, a lot of it's kind of split, you know, people, how they're responding to it. Some people are getting it. Other people are rapidly skeptical to what I think is an irrational degree. And through that, they're covering up the fact that they don't take the allegations and the testimonies seriously for men who were abused and lied to, uh, even if they weren't abused. So it's different per, you know, per person. Amen. So, um, yeah. Anthony, first of all, I want to thank you so much for 
having us on and I have watched what you have done since this came out and the way that you have taken Jesse on in such a bold way is very rare. And I really, really appreciate that very much. And I want to say to Joseph and the team at Church Milton, who I met a lot of these very nice people, Joseph is a warrior and this guy put in major work to get this thing done. It was, and most probably mostly Joseph with some help from others, but I really, really appreciate what you did, Joseph. No, oh, thank you. I appreciate that. And it wasn't just me, you know, um, the editor on the project, Ryan Siebold, put in a lot of effort on this whole thing. And and so did our marketing person, Max Douglas, Ryan Murphy, making those promos, cutting those things out, promoting this product for us. And obviously, all thanks to the person that made this all happen, senior executive producer, Michael Boris. Um, all of these people played the instrumental role, giving everybody the tools that they needed to turn this into the production that has the Internet going wild right now. And more yeah. importantly, exposing the abuse that has been taking place over the past yep. 30 years at Bond. Yeah. A, a woman of that, a woman. I'll yeah. control now, the, uh, the feminists. Now, one of the there's, there's been there's been something that 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 I want that I want to note about this whole thing. We saw him at the studio. Um I would say, I think it was March that we had him in here for uh, an episode that we were doing of just a just this nice little special live event called uh, "Why Aren't You Catholic?" Because we had some questions about why he wasn't Catholic, and when and, and Jesse said he had some questions too. So we bring him in to go and talk to Mike about it. And you know, I, I the thing was, I love just I love Jesse Lee Peterson. He was one of my favorite people on the internet. I would love listening to his stuff. I would love how he was against fornication. I would love how he was against homosexuality. Wow. I would love how he's against all those things. I was a fan of his for almost a decade. I have no interest in ruining something like that. The only reason I did it was because I felt that the evidence was overwhelming, first of all. Yeah. And second of all, because I could not, in my good conscience, let that happen. It's the only reason that we made this documentary. And the other aspect of this whole thing is that he has a huge following of young Catholics. And as a Catholic yeah. apostolate, we cannot have young Catholics following a man who is engaging in these behaviors. We call out bishops. We call out priests that do this whole thing. And yet now there's this other guy who's not even Catholic that's going out for going out. Uh, preaching to young Catholics, gaining a following of young Catholics. We had to do something about this. It was a moral obligation. I, I can say that as a former fan of Jesse Lee Peterson. Yeah. Nobody yeah. ever even nobody ever even asked. They just assumed that we were out to get him. Yeah. Yeah. I, I did not. Uh, go ahead, Patrick. I was going to say it's amazing to find you guys. I didn't even know you guys existed. I didn't know anything about church yeah. military at all, other than I could figure out you're Catholic at a certain point and didn't. You know, you guys didn't agree with us on everything as far as scriptures and so forth. But but I didn't know you guys were so hardcore because I grew up a Catholic, but I grew up kind of a liberal Catholic and they didn't have much punch to them. You know, and morality of the Catholic Church is really sunk over the years. It's really, really pathetic. So it was really kind of a nice surprise to find you guys were out there to begin with. Well, ironically yeah. enough, the, uh, the ironically enough. So the Catholic the Catholic Church. The, the 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 sort of leftward lurch that it's been taking has been largely spearheaded by a lot of people in and outside you know the hierarchy that are suspected of covering up homosexuality or potentially even being homosexuals themselves. Yeah. So you know it's funny that that's kind of the the the, the crux of the issue that 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 exists with Jesse and exists with a lot of these other people. Now Jesse was interesting because he was actually he was actually promoting. You know, the fam a lot of Catholic social values, you know, uh, yes. uh, the hierarchy of the family. He promoted uh, he, he promoted opposing Marxist groups like Black Lives Matter. These are all things to celebrate as far as ideology. But to know that he's doing this stuff behind the scenes kind of changes your tune when it comes to how you view yeah. Jesse Lee Peterson as a leader and, 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 and as a spiritual advisor. Yeah. Well, let me I want to interject on this. Uh, one of my old speakers and a, and a very close friend once told me that. And this is just kind of a you know fortune cookie philosophy, but I've always taken it to heart because I think it hits the nail on the head. And he said to me that the way a man does one thing is the way he does everything. And while that might not be literally true, there's going to be maybe an exception here and there in your life as a man or someone else. I think that holds true here, and particularly it holds true with public figures like Jesse, who are so bombastic and so outspoken 
And that's one of the reasons he spoke at my event is I had a lot of alignment with him too on these different issues. I like that he went after feminism really, really hardcore and women being the slut makers and after, you know, all this kind of hyper promiscuity stuff that we have in dating culture uh, and politics too. I'm a Trump guy. So I like that he was very much on that. So I had a lot of alignment with him too, including like, you know, eight days ago when if you had told me this stuff, I would not have believed you. I'd have been like, wait, what? Which yeah. was kind of my initial response when I first saw it. People see me being same. bombastic now. Yeah, yeah, I didn't know you were a fan of him for 10 years, Joe. That's a big surprise to me. And I yeah, wish that had been in the documentary. Well, at least in the description, maybe. When we're Do doing reports, we try to take the reporter, you know, out of it. I'm just basically yeah. the portal to you, to, you know, the portal of the information going to you. Yeah. I didn't really want to make this about me. I wanted the, you know, the evidence to speak for itself. But, you know, doing this interview kind of gives me the opportunity to kind of have a heart to heart with everybody here. Let them know that I love Jesse Lee Peter. You can go on my Facebook and see a video with me with probably the biggest smile on my face ever when he came to the studio. And 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 we both just look at the camera like, oh, amazing. At the same <laughs> wow. time, that, yes. th that you can go look at that video. It was posted in March while he was at the Church Militant Studio. Well, yeah. Joseph, also you interviewed him on a YouTube that you did by yourself uh, several years ago. Yep, back in, in 2018. Wow. A very friendly 2018. interview. Very friendly interview. By the way, just so it's clear, I have almost 100% agreement with Jesse on issues and spirituality um, uh, with very little. Uh, the only thing is, I think he's, by the way he said some of the things he said, I think he's forced people in the other direction just by the way he's gone about some of the things. But as far as what he believes, I have very little um, not in common with him. And just one more thing on that, just so we kind of put it out there. Uh, you guys had Roy Masters out at the beginning of the video, who was kind of his mentor. Um, as you know, Joseph, I'm I'm not against Roy. I know you guys have theological uh, disagreements with him, but Roy Masters, I think, probably saved my life as a young man in terms of learning about his meditation. And so I think he was a good man who did. Everybody has some flaws, but he was a decent, good man who helped millions of people uh, around the world. And I'm, I'll, I'm forever grateful to Roy Masters, and I'm for, I'm forever grateful for whatever good came through Jesse Lee Peterson. I will not discount that. No, I don't think we should be discounting the good that anybody does. I mean, all good things come from God, even if they come through, you know, not necessarily the correct means, right? I mean, yeah. this is just the simple philosophical conclusion that that St. Augustine came to. And then nowhere in the documentary is it saying that Roy Masters had anything to do with any to do with any of this or anything like that. We're just I, I just wanted to kind of explain the foundation, Jesse's foundation. And um, and just kind of move from there. And and once again, yeah, I mean, me and Patrick obviously don't agree on theology. I'm a Catholic. He's a subscriber to uh, Roy Masters, uh, you know, Silent Meditations. And um, and uh, I believe it's sort of a it, you guys you guys don't believe in Christ's divinity, for example. That's something. Well, that I believe that Christ, as Jesse and Roy Masters did, he's now deceased. Uh, believe that uh, Jesus is the Son of God. We don't believe right, but not but not God. Correct. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then the Catholics, obviously, you know, we're about the Holy Trinity, where it's three persons, one God. So that's just a, that, and that's our that's our different of, difference of opinion. So for our Catholic audience, we wanted to outline the theology that he was coming from first, and then kind of move in there. But we we as far as as far as we as far as we know, I mean, obviously nothing is impossible, but it doesn't seem to me that Roy Masters had anything to do with any of this. No, he did, he did uh, not yeah. have anything to do with this. I can yeah. assure you. Um, I want to add here that at this point, not personally, this is just me, but in my observation and in my relationship with Jesse, so based on that anyway, and what I'm seeing now with the documentary, and I believe these allegations are 100% true, at least fundamentally. Uh, so each person, I believe that beyond any shadow of a doubt that Jesse has engaged in homosexual activity, that he's been grooming men that were in the documentary, and probably a lot more. I don't know how many more, but I'd be surprised if it was only the men in the documentary. Very surprised. Because well, I can that's tell not you that it's more. I can tell you that it's more. You, you, um, have to, you, sure. have to, you have to understand, Anthony, that when I came out with this, I uh, when I started writing about this in a kind of circular way at first, I only knew about my experience that happened fairly recently and a young man that Jesse did some wrong sexual stuff with and then used a, a spiritual trip on him. I knew him from way back. He didn't come out. He didn't want to come out for this documentary. Yeah. But I knew, I knew those two things. And I and I knew if something happened way back when with this young man and something happened further down the line with me, way further down the line, 
it's pretty obvious that I believe that there was something going on in between. And once I started putting my information out, that's when other people like Samuel and the others uh, came forward. Yeah. And thank God you guys did. And I, Cause it's, you guys are, you have the courage that these other men haven't found yet and maybe they will, and maybe they should. God will. Uh, I don't, you know, there's no way to demand that they do, but given what's going on, it's the right thing to do to step up because people are being hurt and being abused. I, I consider this, uh, in some ways it's, it's fraud in a commercial sense. Jesse is pretending to be these things. And, and Jesse is probably, in my opinion, the most notorious homo basher on the internet. I don't know anyone uh, now that, especially the Rush Lim well, Rush Limbaugh's dead. So who's bigger than Jesse at, at going after gays and homosexual behavior today? Now he's allegedly a Christian, so I'm not, uh, you know, he's congruent to his alleged faith with that, right? You're going to go to hell, Satan is your daddy, blah, blah, blah. But I don't know anyone else on the internet or radio who has a bigger voice speaking out this stuff. And the fact that he is also behind the scenes engaging in these behaviors, and then on top of that, collecting money through a 501c3 nonprofit, this is fraud. This is, I don't know if it's criminal fraud per se, but this is like, financial fraud or commercial fraud, moral fraud, it's religious fraud. I had never even thought of the word until the other day, religious fraud, because I'm not involved in religious matters on a regular basis. Some of my friends are, they're pastors and stuff. Jesse's not the only pastor we've had speak at the event. But this is, it's just such a bizarre concoction of fraud. And it makes me really angry that he lied to my face for all these years. And all of my friends and my speakers and my customers and my fans, and the whole community of the Manosphere, never mind MAGA, America first, all this stuff. America first now is divided. Milo is one of the most prominent voices in there. He's spoken up that this is true and that he's confirmed the allegations in the documentary. He believes them 100%. And now Nick Fuentes, the other America first groper or whatever they call him, he's attacking Milo. And he's just saying that, you know, all this is all bullshit. And that to me, I've met both of these guys. I know both of these guys, loosely speaking, I've met both of them. Milo much more so than Nick. I've only met Nick once. But it's it's causing a big divide, and rightly so, I guess, because it's a very serious set of events. And that's what is also, like I mentioned, so frustrating is that these people aren't taking it seriously. You guys are, you know, Patrick, you didn't come out and say that, you know, 20 years ago, you know, you and Jesse and a couple of guys from Bond went on a cruise. Jesse got drunk and made out with a stripper. Like, that's not what you're saying. You're saying you had a 10 year homosexual relationship with Jesse Lee Peterson. This is not funny. Like, this guy is the biggest, you know, gay basher on the Internet. And he's a Christian pastor, self-proclaimed. Yeah, I think we're I think we're dealing with something even deeper than just sex here. And I've said this from the get-go. Um, Jesse is in the Bible. It describes people who are self-deceived. Uh, they actually eat their own food, so to speak. And if you watch Jesse speak in any given situation, he is. I believe he's deceived himself, or the devil has deceived him so well that he's he believes all this stuff internally. And his theology kind of goes hand in hand with the stuff that he says. For instance, when he got on the uh, Church Militant show and said that the uh, that Jesus didn't rise necessarily in the body or it didn't matter, he what he's done is he separated the body from the spirit. And, and Michael Voorhees, I believe his name is, the, the, the man who... Voris. Voris. Is, sorry about that. He, he nailed him on that. He caught yeah. that. It says, if you separate the body from the spirit, you can excuse all sorts of horrors. And this is what Jesse's done. He says even to this day that it's all about the heart and that once your heart, get you get right with God with your heart, he'll take away the rest of the stuff. Don't worry about the rest of the stuff. Well, don't matter that for Jesse, God, up until I know, never did take this stuff away. So Jesse, I can't believe that his heart really did get right to begin with if he didn't take all this other stuff out of Jesse, too. Yeah, and I think one of the most profound parts of the documentary, just just, you know, writ large was the one part where you talked about how after your first sexual experience with uh with jesse that you that you actually had said from then on he started saying it meant you were born again which yes. is obviously the protestants call that 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 is a that's an allegory for you know that part of your baptism yeah so what you it, 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 it from from a catholic perspective you know baptism is called a sacrament and that is a blasphemy of a sacrament that was a huge deal to Tons of people. And I heard about that, not, not not even from atheists. They were like, that's kind of messed up that he would yeah. do something like that. When you take oh. something that's meant to be pure, that's meant to purify your soul, that's, me allowed, that, that's meant to empty you of the sin that you were born with. 
all of those things, a sacrament of such great beauty and love and purity, and to just 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 to make it dirty and disgusting and, and and nasty, it has this natural effect on human beings when they read it. And that and that's why I put it in the documentary to begin with, because when I heard it, I was just like, oh. That was I want to add song. here. I want to add here that I'm not a Christian. I'm not a Catholic anymore. I was raised as a Catholic. Uh, you know, baptism, first communion, confirmation, all that. I haven't been a Catholic or a Christian in 16, 17 years. But as an atheist as, and an objectivist, I did watch that specific part in the documentary a couple times over when Michael was interviewing Jesse in your studio at uh, Church Militant. And regarding Jesus rising out of the tomb or not, it wasn't just that Jesse denied it. That wasn't really what happened. It's that he was flippant and indifferent to it. He didn't really care. Yeah. Like it wasn't, it, right. in a way he denied it. And that's what it seemed that Michael was uh, focusing on. But much more broadly, as an observer who's not a Christian, I'm like, this guy doesn't even seem to care. This is, this is supposed to be a religious church leader who literally runs a church and a nonprofit who doesn't really care if Jesus rose from the dead or not. Right. You got to right. be kidding me. And that's that makes right. me think that he's not a Christian at all. Not from a theological position like you guys who might say he's a heretic and whatever. I think it's all fraud. I don't think he believes any of it. I don't think he cares about Jesus. I think he makes it all up. I think it's a big act. That's my honest conclusion based on what I'm seeing, that it's all as huge character he's created, like a like a radio character. Yeah. And that the real Jesse is the guy behind the mask who's a predator and a homo, a homo predator, which made me laugh all day Saturday when I first heard that term. <laughs> I've never heard that term. I, believe, I think we actually, I think we might have coined it at church militants. I think we're the yeah. ones that came up yeah. with the term like years ago for, for other reasons, obviously it wasn't just for Jesse. Well, but, it's the uh, way, it's the way you delivered it too. It was so serious and sincere. You're like this homo predator. I mean, a lot of people I talked to were laughing so hard at that. And I that's why I came up with homosexual super predator. I was yeah. like, let me, let me, let me emphasize what this guy's saying. <laughs> Yeah, yeah let, me, let, me, let me say something about the things that Jesse did and did to people and then use these spiritual tricks, which I think is just horrific. I mean, it's one thing to do something sexually with them and another thing to play spiritual tricks. The first guy that, I, that didn't appear, um, this happened many years ago, what happened with him is Jesse inappropriately was touching him when the guy fell asleep. That's a story that I heard, and I, and I believe that's what he would corroborate. And then when Jesse was caught, when he woke up and said, like, what are you doing, Jesse? Jesse's response was, this is what fathers do. Now, <laughs> that's really incredibly beyond the pale to hear something like that. And he did something similar with that was shown on, uh, on the video with, with uh, Samuel. He had Samuel close his eyes, go into a meditative prayer, and then told Samuel... Don't believe all lies, uh, all, all, uh, all thoughts are lies, which he always says every Sunday at his service. All thoughts are lies all the time. And don't believe any thoughts. Meanwhile, he had Samuel, his eyes closed, inappropriately touching this guy and telling him, getting him to think all thoughts are lies. Therefore, don't freak out when you, when you see and feel me touching you. I mean, I don't know how bad it, it can get beyond that. Uh, you guys might be familiar with the the three Fs or the four Fs, so fight, flight, freeze. And the fourth one is actually fawn in trauma psychology. And this is what like children do when they're in abusive relationships and their parents beat them or molest them or whatever. And fawn uh, it was also about freeze, obviously, is maybe the one that's more important here. And I think what Jesse consistently did, particularly with Samuel and probably a few others, is he tries to push them into a freeze response. And that's part of why he's trying to get them to distrust their own thoughts. Yes. Like, hey, I have alarm bells going off. Get out. I'm not safe. I was abused as a child. Like, I think Samuel clarified that. I don't know if you yeah. were Patrick, but I believe Samuel made that. I was clear. as well. I was about eight years yeah. old. I was, I was abused as a, as a child. Yeah. And that makes you vulnerable to going, in my understanding, in my own amateur study of trauma psychology, it makes you vulnerable in the future of going into a freeze response when you have that same situation come back. Because when you were a kid, that was like your only option. If you couldn't run fast enough or fight because you were a little kid, you freeze as an attempt to protect yourself, which doesn't work, but yes. it comes back as an adult. And he's trying to uh, coax people back into that. That's the purpose of saying that, in my yes. opinion. Yes, I, I, I agree with that part. And like I said in the video, when Jesse first came at me in, in motel room, or hotel room in uh, Virginia, adjacent to DC for an event that we were there, uh, what he did was just, as I said in the video, but it bears repeating here, he turned and looked at me all. So we were talking on the near on the bed, but we were, had been friends for decades, very close. Turns on me in the bed and says, what do you want to do? 
in a, in a louder voice than I'm even using. And, and, and I was shocked. And I realized later that, you know, I'm, you, you may not be religious, Anthony, but I realized that the devil uses shock to get what he wants. Let's put it this way. Evil mm -hmm. uses shock. So it's kind of like that freeze thing you were talking about. I was like, I was shocked when he said that. Yep. And it kind of took me out of my normal kind of state of mind in a way. Yep. And um, it, it was very weird. But I, I do want to say, by the way, and I've said this to Joseph before, I, I don't call myself a victim in the sense that I was people are asking, well, it was it consensual, all this? Yes, it was consensual for me. I don't claim to be a victim per se. I do. I do. People should know that, yes, I was molested as a, as a kid and that I went to Jesse when I first met him to help. He was going to help me overcome this state of mind. He was going to help me overcome this sin. That was the agreement. I started to um, uh, consult with him. You know, he was my counselor and instead he flipped that on me. So I'm just yes. saying I'm not a victim on one hand, but I do want people to understand the way that he used tactics on me and other people as well very devious well let me let me is, uh i, I do want to i want to address that really quick that's why we called you a victim in the report and and the report did label you a victim because you had that counselor role with him and the aspect with as which is true with a lot of these other cases it you know it doesn't matter that you were underage it doesn't matter that you were that that it was that, that it was consensual or not per se, in your instance. What matters is, is that he was in this role of authority above you, this role of counselor, this role of getting you in a position of vulnerability in order to help you and instead abused it. That's still predatory behavior. Absolutely. Absolutely. This is what people don't understand. And it's real easy to get on the internet and see people's streams and say, well, that guy would have touched me. I would have kicked his ass, you know. Um, yeah. that, that may be true if you were going into the situation uh, didn't have vulnerabilities, uh, traumas in your life, and yep. that you didn't put a person on a particular pedestal to begin with so that everything that person said or did, you made it okay in your mind because yes. you had to believe that person over yourself. You put them in a weird zone where they're, you're actually putting them above you. And so everything that they did that might have looked odd along the way, you, I would consistently and other people – would consistently just throw it off and say, oh, that's me. I'm not looking at this right. He he must be doing this for a reason. You know, he's uh, a very All of you said man. that, too. Almost all of you said that. You tried to come up with every single one of you. This is one of the reasons that I thought that this mm -hmm. might be credible. All Every single one of the people that I talked to, Martin, Arman, Samuel, they were all like, I wasn't, I, I wasn't, I wasn't, uh, I, I was trying, they all came up with excuses for what was going on and, and tr to try yeah. and justify, hey, maybe he's not actually you know, sexually preying on me right now. Every it's single Stockholm, one of them it's made Stockholm those syndrome. Yeah, it's, it's common syndrome. among victims of this. It's extremely yes. common. And if people don't understand the context of those things and they say, I just punch them in the face. Well, you got to understand the victim psychology in, in, in these scenarios, especially when it's in these counselor, counselee, pastor, parishioner relationship. Yep. Everybody wants to consider themselves a tough guy. But, uh, and some people would respond if they were normally centered and so forth I'm, I'm one of those people i feel like i would jack somebody if they did yeah, that yeah. To me. i have I, that feeling inside <laughs> of me but i've also never been in that scenario you I've weren't molested as a been in it. you weren't molested as a child joe i think yeah. that's that's where these people are not they're not empathizing even a little bit they're just having knee jerk you know i'm a ch alpha chad i wouldn't let him do that well you right. weren't touched as a as an eight-year-old kid like well, you can't speak from that position and i have empathy for those men who have been through that it's sick. yeah and, and, yeah, and and I there actually came a point, and I told Joseph this. I don't think it it, it it may have made it into my larger interview, but there was a point where I was realizing, obviously, like my, my conscience was talking to me, and I couldn't get away from it. And I realized at some point, okay, this is wrong. I got to stop this. I came to Jesse and said, no, we can't do this anymore. This is wrong. And he was like not taking me seriously, and he kept trying to do stuff with me. It got to the point where. I was stupidly sitting in his bedroom one, one day after I said this to him. He started coming on to me. I said, no, I'm, I'm done with this stuff. He kept coming after me. I said, no, he kept coming. I just took my, my hand like this and grabbed him by the throat. I said, you're not going anywhere. I grabbed him and, and there's nothing he could do. He just backed off. And then I just left the, the room. And I just drove away. He, um, 
he called me a few minutes later while I was on the road and just went off on me. Just said, never do that to me again. You know, ever do that to me again. And then all of a sudden he caught himself and realized that he was out of control, angry, which he always counsels people not to be. And, and then all of a sudden he backed off and then used the other personality. He's a master at using the hot and cold. He's a, after- psychopath. He's a psychopath. I think he meets the criteria for the Harris psychopathy checklist. This guy's a sociopath or a psychopath. This is a predator. That's what, that's what makes me so mad is all, when it all clicked for me, the big picture of what had happened and what was going on in Bond and on the internet and on YouTube and his little cult and the victims and everything like that for decades now. This guy is an actual predator and is a psychopath or sociopath and is like seriously ill in the head, which doesn't yeah. excuse anything. I mean, that, that doesn't make it okay, but this guy is really, really deeply, every alarm in my head, every red flag alarm went off at like at the same time when it all clicked for me and I really got to sit down and go for a walk and kind of stew on this. I was like, holy shit. Well, think about, think about this. I had written five articles about Jesse going around about not using his name. And I had had three conversations with him after writing these articles. We, one of them was for 57 minutes. Hmm. We had actually pretty good conversations. My wife looked at me, though, and said, you know, he's, he's playing you. Because he was, he was using our old friendship to kind of pull me in. He actually, on uh, the long conversation, he actually offered me a job uh, uh, to, to be part of his 24-hour conservative radio network. And it was so laughable because there's no way in hell he would actually do it. And when I had called him before originally about this and, and, and told him, no, we're done and all this, he actually offered me something as well. He said he was doing some real estate stuff with the guys in L.A., some of the young guys. And he said, after I told him all this stuff, I don't want anything to do with you. He said, well, can I send some guys to you that are looking for properties and stuff? Because he knew that I was, I was getting into real estate at the time. And I'm like, no, that's not that's a good idea right now. So after that, after that conversation, the last one I had with him, I'd written five articles already, but we were still relatively friendly. Everything changed when I heard Samuel's story, because then I realized this is new. And, and the timeline on Samuel's story was after I had already written five articles in a roundabout way and talked to Jesse three times on the phone in a friendly manner. Then I found out about Samuel. Everything in my so a switch went off on my mind. I said, no, this is it. I called Jesse immediately after I, I talked to Samuel. And I just, yeah, I, I couldn't get Jesse on the phone at that point, but I just yelled at him. I said, I said, what in the hell are you doing? What in the hell are you doing? There is something wrong with you. I heard about Samuel. You got to stop. You're sick. You need some help. Let's and, clarify too. Samuel is less than half the age of Jesse Lee Peterson. He's 29, 30. Jesse is 30. like 73. Yeah, so, 30. And Jesse is maybe 72 at the, at the time and stuff was going on. So yeah. Samuel has his own story. But that's when the thing slipped in my mind. Maybe it flipped because it was no longer me anymore and it was current. And once once I re- realized he was doing something currently with somebody that wasn't me, I said, that's it. Then I started to use his name. That's when I that's when I started to use his name in the articles. I never used his name until that time. I was trying to originally do this in a very roundabout way knowing that there's probably other so-called victims out there, but I didn't want to, Jesse had been a friend of mine for so many, for decades, and I was still had that friendship thing going. I really didn't want to like destroy him or hurt the organization and that kind of thing. So I kind of worked my way around about as much as I could until I couldn't be around about anymore after Samuel. Now, now this, now just, just to clarify here, this was another trend that was that 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 we caught on when it came to the. None of all of them were 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 kind of on the fence about it. Samuel, I know, was on the fence about it too. Yeah, there was a lot of people that that, that were like, I, Jesse has still done a lot for me, this, that, and the other, and 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 it's like, and and all I and, and I told them on the phone, if the if everything you're telling me is true, you have to do something about it. You know, you can't mm-hmm. stand on the sidelines and allow him to do this. First of all, that's not the best thing for Jesse because that just gives him a justification to continue doing what he's been doing. Yes. And 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 in that case, that's that that was the straw that, you know, broke the camel's back for Samuel and he decided to come out and say something with his face using his name, which took a lot of courage on his part, by the way. Yeah. But all yeah. of these men didn't want 
to do this to Jesse. And all of them have a proven track record of having a close relationship to him and not yeah. wanting to hurt him in any way. This is Joseph, something that was that was across the board the case. I, I Joseph, I wrestled with myself for months before coming out on this stuff. And yeah, I, I think I had to do some convincing. Yeah, that's right. To get you to come to the church militant studio. And I eventually told uh, my family, which a lot of people piled on me for uh, telling my family, but I had told Jesse, what happened was just to tell that real quick. I had told Jesse and was on the phone and said, I don't want anything to do with you anymore after this. We're done. But Jesse kept calling my wife and my son. And Jesse was our godfather. He married myself and my wife and he was uh, my son's godfather. These so are recent, had, recent phone calls you're saying. Well, when I was uh, a couple years ago now, but, okay. but, but he kept calling them and um, it bothered me. Quite frankly, it bothered me. With, I don't with, really... Let me, let me be clear. That means there's a track record and a paper trail of this, that these records can be pulled in one either directly by a customer or through a subpoena through a court. Just saying like people are saying there's no paper trail. There's a paper trail of what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah, there was. So I, I, I told him, uh, I don't want anything to do with you. And then he was calling my, my, my wife and my son and he wanted to keep the same relationship with them or get or, or use them to get close to me again whatever the case may be and i said i can't have that it, it, it bothered me at the time it, it really bothered me and so i called him up and I, I um i forgot the first thing i did i think i called him up and said don't do that but um i ended up telling i ended up telling my family about this because i didn't i wanted to just put the whole thing clean i wanted to come clean to begin with and i wanted them to know what had happened I broke the cardinal rule of Jesse, by the way, which is never tell your wife if you cheat on her. He used to say that in church all the time and on his radio show. It probably still does. Wow. Um, well, I don't think he still does, but he used to for sure. You could find that on anybody could find that on, on the Internet. If they so really if you know. commit adultery, don't confess your sins. That's what don't, a Christian pastor don't, said. Don't yeah, yeah, exactly. What it is, though, that it, it, it is this stuff spiritually, whether you say it or not, is spiritually going to mess with your wife. It's spiritually going to mess with your son. And so when I first told my son about this, his my son had a very close relationship with Jesse, and he looked at Jesse in a certain way, too. He thought Jesse could literally walk on water, as I said in, in, in the video. And he was mostly mad at me because he thought Jesse was perfect and would never do anything like this. So he demanded that I get on the phone with Jesse and talk to Jesse about this with him there. I did, and Jesse denied it right away. And I just said, Jesse, you're a liar. You're lying. And Jesse finally fessed up. And so my son heard all that stuff. And then I think we had a second phone call, as I recall. Yeah, it was a second phone call. Uh, I don't know, maybe a day later, whatever it was. I don't know what the timeline was with my wife on there as well. So Jesse did apologize. I will give him that. He did, as I've said to many people many times, he did. Wait, apologize. Can you say that? Can you say that again? He admitted that he did what you accuse him of. Yes, he he apologized to myself, my wife, my son. We we're all there on a, on a group call. Um, they, we all know that he did it. And when I pushed him, he finally apologized. He was denying it for a little while. And he said how sorry he was and we wanted to stay close to us and all this stuff. But obviously his, the way he acted after that showed that he had no interest in talking to his congregation, no interest in, uh, in coming clean with this stuff in any kind of way. To me, if you're a Christian minister, um, you owe something to God and sins against the body uh, you'll never hear, by the way, you'll never hear Jesse quote any scriptures in his church where sins against the body are mentioned or sexual sins. But in, in, in the scriptures, it says that sins against the body are the worst sins of all. And so, um, but, but he will never mention, I forgot my train of thought there, but he will never mention those things at, at all and uh, doesn't believe in talking about those things in church. So I want to change gears a little bit. I want to focus uh, on Church Militant and Joe, kind of your angle here uh, from your perspective. So what is the history of Church Militant? Uh, I wasn't familiar with the organization at all. I looked into you guys pretty quick. You had a big YouTube channel, a big Facebook following, good following on Gab and stuff like that. Um, I had friends kind of look through your guys' videos, kind of random videos they would pick, and they would kind of get a gauge on what your ideological positions were with politics and culture and religion and stuff. And they were pretty pleased at what they saw. They were like, hey, this is obviously not some Democrat, you know, super PAC feminist organization trying to do some hit job. You were very much, most people a month ago would have said you were very much aligned with Jesse. Maybe not theologically, but in a lot of other there was issues. Lots of fans. There were yeah. lots of fans of Jesse at the crossover. We, we interviewed him twice yeah. before this, and then we had him on in our <clears throat> studio for a third time. 
Mm-hmm. And and we planned on having him come to, come again to debate the Holy Trinity. And you can actually hear that at the end of the debate with Michael Voris if you listen to wow. it. Wow. So we actually had planned on having him come back to the studio because we honestly, we had a wonderful time with Jesse while he was here. He brought his producer, Nick Gonzalez, with him. And, 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 and and it was it was good. We had yeah. fun. We got we we grabbed burgers. He loved he he went on record saying he loves what we're doing at the beginning of the debate as well. He liked us. Wow. We liked him. There was no bad blood at all. Yes, we yeah. disagreed on theology, and Michael Voris would describe his theology as whack because I personally agree with that statement. I mean, denying the resurrection, denying Christ's divinity and stuff as a Catholic, that's just heresy from our that's perspective. Heresy. Is it's, it blasphemy or it's heresy? It's well, I mean, what Jesse's doing is blasphemy. Yeah, I would, I would say, I would say, it can it arises to blasphemy to deny God His righteous position? So, in, in my, okay. in, in my theological position, yeah. And now, can, I hear, can I make a uh, point here? Yeah, go ahead. Well, yeah. Maybe I'm getting ahead of you in your comments, and you want to wait on this, but, and you can tell me if you want to deal with this now or later. But one of the biggest things we're hearing from people is, oh, where's your proof, right? First of all, obviously, eyewitness testimony works in court everywhere in the world, as far as I know, right? Um, and, and all of us know, all of us, I mean, I've known this guy for 30 years. I've worked in every phase of bond for 20 years. I've done fundraising. I've managed the office. I've been on the board. I mean, I've done everything you can think of at the bond. Everybody knows me at the old in, in the old congregation, okay? Everybody knows Samuel, the Mexican car wash boy in the new congregation. We are not mysteries to people. And when people say, oh, why don't you get a picture of this? Why don't you get a video of that? Why don't you get a text of this? They're not necessarily thinking about how things actually would go in real life. Yeah. I was friends and very close to Jesse the whole time. You think I'm going to be going around uh, trying to sneak pictures of him and, and get videos of him or secretly recording when we're still friends or I'm still, even when I uh, called him out with my, with my family, we still were close to him. I wasn't thinking I needed to go trap this guy or something. Maybe I should have. Maybe I was a dummy. But I wasn't thinking that way. We were close with Jesse. So people kind of need to, like, realize the way things actually work in life. It's, yeah. not, it's not neat like, like people want to make it to be. And I keep hearing the same crap over and over and over. And it's really absurd if you know it, the background, all you got to do is check the background of the people. That's or- the problem that people don't that people don't know. This this is this is common. I mean, this is why this is how priests and bishops get away with abusing children, get away with abusing seminarians, which are grown men that are learning things. By the way, they're not kids. It's not just kids. There are homosexual predators in the Catholic Church that are either that are that are either uh, uh, in the hierarchy that are engaging in covering it up. There are, there are priests that are doing it. There are rectors at seminaries that are doing it, and they have to rely on eyewitness testimony. Now, in your specific case, you, it's, they're asking for, oh, where are, your tech, where are your dirty text messages? Where are your this? Where is your that and the other? I was like, well, last I checked, you were married at the time during that happened, and both of you would be trying to keep that relationship as secretive as possible. Hello? Yeah. Nobody, um, nobody, nobody's using their critical thinking skills when they come to these conclusions. Jesse, when they go and ask, you're asking for hard evidence. What do you think they made a video? Yeah. Are you kidding me? Jesse, just one last thing here, Anthony. Jesse is not right. a dummy. He's not a dummy. Okay. Correct. He's a very smart dude. And a lot of that, I think is the devil working through him uh, myself, but uh, Jesse doesn't, you think Jesse's going to go around and make texts? We know, you don't think we heard of Edward Snowden before or anybody else? You, you, you think he's going to make texts to me saying, hey, love you, man, and, and start making saying outrageous things to me over a text, or we're going to make some kind of video together or something like that? You don't understand the relationship whatsoever if you keep asking for this stuff. Either that you don't understand it, or you really are secretly trying to knock us out and really uh, are secretly yeah. a pro-Jesse person. You know, what, Patrick, you, know, you, know, you know what, Patrick? I'd like to ask everybody in the audience a quick little question right now. How many of you guys believed in the in, in Epstein Island and the Lolita Express before there was hard evidence? But when there was just eye when the, when there was just eyewitness testimony, when there was just uh, rumors of it going around and things like that, allegations lead to hard evidence. Yes. Yep. Absolutely. And, and really, there is a trail here too. And I guess if somebody had to open their crack this thing open at some point. There, there obviously are 
uh, somebody probably taped it's probably the government uh, but but these conversations were made on a regular telephone so I'm sure that somebody has a record of the stuff well, there's definitely records of the calls, and yeah. that's not going away. They're, the, as a customer of Sprint or T-Mobile or whatever, they're only going to give you access to so many years of records, but the records they keep are permanent. They don't get rid of them. And those can be through a discovery process and a civil lawsuit, never mind criminal. You can get those with a subpoena pretty easily. And yeah. if this does go to court, and maybe it should, that's going to get revealed. And Jesse's okay. going to panic. That's why Jesse hasn't really responded yet. We're going to review soon his one response he's made, one line he's given so far which he then deleted, by the way. They went on the YouTube editor on their channel on YouTube and actually deleted it very quickly. Oh, I saw of course, that. <laughs> of, course, I, of course, I downloaded it before they could delete it because I know how Anthony. I've God dealt with, sec God I've dealt with psychopaths you. like this before. In the Manosphere, um, I had, you guys will find this on my YouTube channel. I had an ex-wife who I found out was a escort prostitute, uh, lifelong, including when we were together. Wow. And yeah, it was pretty, it was pretty nasty. And uh, I woke up one day to find out my wife was a hooker. Wow. I'm sorry yeah. That. And, you and, do a show on that one, uh, Anthony. Well, there's a speech on it I gave called okay. Marrying, Medu Marrying Medusa, How to Survive a Female Psychopath. And that was my first experience up close in personal life with someone who had a, lived basically a double life like Jesse yes. and was really motivated and practiced and persistent in hiding it, really went out of their way to hide it, to live this double life. And yeah. that's what that's what got me interested. This is back in 2016 when this happened. We were together well, for four four and a half years. The 2016 I, is when it I, blew up. I'm sorry. I was wondering how you knew, how you zeroed in on Jesse's and what he's doing so quickly. Yes. That's what it, you just answered my question. Can I say well, I've spent uh, just real quick. I've spent since then on and off, but especially the first two years after 2016, I spent a lot of time studying psychopathology, trauma psychology, predators, dangerous personalities. Joe Navarro, one of our speakers, is an FBI agent. He was an FBI uh, criminal uh, profiler, special agent for like 25 years. He worked with the Secret Service, FBI, all kinds of stuff. Even he used to work protection for the Pope. Uh, yeah. I'm serious. Like this guy, he's a major pub public figure, Joe Navarro. You can check him out. And, and he but, went off, he was a predator, you're saying? No, not Joe Navarro. He's oh. he's written a lot of books on this, on body like language. Yeah. He writes pretty much on body language is one of his focuses. He's the most popular body language expert in the world. His books have got sold millions of copies, but also he studies dangerous personalities. That's mostly what he did for the FBI for 25 years, was yeah. profile and study and interview people who are murderers, serial killers, child predators, rapists, like really serious stuff that the average person, unless you're law enforcement, has very little interaction with. You might see, you actually meet these people in your daily life at the grocery store, at church, whatever, yes. and you have no idea. It's like one or 2% of the population who are really, really screwed up like this. You know and they get, I, they get away with see, it. I'd love to see him react to the video and ask, yeah. and, and, and then yeah. have people ask him if those, if those victims that yeah. are in, that are in that documentary are credible according to his professional analysis, given their body language, giving yeah. their, giving their, giving their knowledge, given their knowledge, given their anything. Matter of fact, so, I challenge, I challenge him to do that. I yeah. challenge him to do that. I, so am, that's I of, have full, that's the thing. I have full confidence in my investigation. I have yeah. full confidence in the evidence that I've uncovered that it will lead to a conclusion. Yeah. Yep. And, I like and, to, and, I, and, I, and I welcome any expert to go and analyze that. Yeah, I go do. ahead. Debunk my report. I dare you. Yeah, I yeah. would like to. I'd like to know too because I see these armchair um, body language experts on the internet, and they're saying, "Oh, I saw Patrick or who, or anybody else," and "Oh, yeah, they're lying." I know. I'm really good at knowing and all this stuff, and I'm Nonsense. laughing. I'm, I'm kind of like laughing to myself, like, "Wait." You know, but I don't know, right? I'm the well, one. Patrick, who according to Jesse, you are the smartest white man on this side of heaven, and yeah. that was in the documentary too. Right. So yeah. you know, which which one is it? Am I the smartest guy, or or um, you know, a horrible, a horrible, immoral liar? Yeah. So, and that's the thing. Yeah, him deleting the clips, him running from Martin Francis and trying to deflect on his past sins when he's asking him about his cor his current sins, his ongoing sins. You can see the guilt. You can see you can see the guilt on the face. If somebody if somebody went up and said that to me, to you, or anybody, if somebody said, "Hey, you're having homosexual sex," I'd be like, "No, I'm not. Never." Yeah, it's yep. like it's like he know Martin. For those who don't know, and you guys know this, Martin Francis has been around for thirty years plus years. He's known Jesse. He is the greatest um, a, a helper, volunteer. Um, giver of money, giver of time, even servant practically. I mean, he was giving, he was 
getting Jesse his breakfast and food every day. I mean, the guy completely went into service. He was like an old Catholic too. A lot of us ex-Catholics are into service, I guess. Yeah, we're gonna. Well, I want to get all you back, by the way. Yeah, he was all into that. He, Martin, Jesse knew Martin for thirty plus years. He helped Jesse in so many ways. So the way you repay this guy is when Martin's calling out to you, you not only ignore him, you have the police um, uh, put handcuffs on him. Then you lie about him, take him to court where you lie in court about him with your with your associates. And this is the way you repay a guy instead of just, if, if you think that Martin was so off, wouldn't you have come to him as a Christian man and said, hey, Martin, I know we get a problem here. Let's work this out. Let's deal with this. None of that was done. Doesn't that tell anybody who really is looking for the truth what's going on here? Well, here's the other part of the problem. I hear a lot of people complaining about this. I hear, I've hear i heard this a hundred times. This guy's a meth head. He looks like he's on drugs. Or this, that, and the other. Like, you know what, dude? He has cancer, all right? What's yeah. wrong with you? He yeah. has cancer. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Well, on top of that, let me... That's I read about that, too, that he has cancer. But on top of that, let's back up to what you said earlier, Joe, and maybe Patrick as well. Jesse set up an entire church and organization to specifically target and basically prey upon men who are damaged and wounded and were molested and on drugs and getting out of jail that it, I don't know exactly what his timeline of his motivations in life or how exactly crazy this dude is, but he basically over time set up this organization or utilized it to target and prey on people, men specifically, right? Not women so much. He has some women fans, but mostly it's men. And this is who he targets with Bond. It's for okay. men rebuilding the man, not the woman. Yeah, this like, is getting into the nitty gritty here, uh, Anthony. Because I'm going to be totally uh, clear here, honest as, as I, I can be. I've had trouble even almost to this day with that idea that Jesse would have. I don't even know even to this day if I believe that he believed. He was setting this thing up as a predatory, a grueling predatory situation. I think the devil was working with him from the get go. I don't know if he fully was conscious of that. And I still think that in his mind, he thinks he's helping people week to week. Oh, yeah, uh, I really do. Um, now, I just want everybody. But I want everybody to notice what you're saying right now. This is once again, think of this as an out and as, as an outsider looking in. Remember, I'm a reporter. I had to do it that way. I had to look at this as an objective observer. More importantly, I was a fan of Jesse because I, obviously I didn't want this to be true. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't think you would either, Anthony. No. You know, I no. mean, no, none of us wanted this, this, no. this to be the case. But I had to look at him, you know, like from, you know, from 10,000 foot of 10,000 feet above yeah. and, and see what he's saying is true. And when I hear, when I hear him saying, defending the organization, like, no, it's actually helping people. No, it's doing this. I don't think this is why he was doing it. This, that, and the other, these are nuances that somebody that's out to get somebody typically would not do. You would have Correct. to be a master class manipulator to be able to do that. And, and to have five master class manipulators sitting, sitting, you know, sitting, sitting down with me and telling me things that the, the odds of that are insane. It's just, it's just, it's just not there. All of these nuances existed in every single, cause I had phone calls with all of you guys for hours on end oh, yeah. before I even produced this thing. Yeah. Yep. Yep. We talk know that. I, I've talked to you for at least, I think I've talked to you for a total of 12 hours before I made this documentary, Patrick. Wow. Just on the phone. You talking to me? Yeah, yeah, just yeah. you. Just we, had, you. we had some very good conversations. And, and very I, long I, ones. I didn't know that you were so young because you had a great knowledge of this stuff. And I guess you guys have a lot of experience with it, which I respect a lot in your own church. I didn't know you were so young. And, and I'm not putting that against you. I think it's a, a, a step for you because at a young age, you've learned a lot in life. And I, and I commend you. No, oh, thank you. Yeah. I, I, I I appreciate that. And and church church militant itself is is it, it, it you know they're described not we don't describe they, they we've been described as the Catholic Church's special victims unit. I mean to to be perfectly honest with you, we were kind of like at first with the story we were kind of like this doesn't really relate to Catholics at all. <laughs> and I kind of I, I kind of had to push back and say this guy has a very very large following of young Catholics. I mean he's he's got a lot of young Catholic followers in America first. Manosphere, obviously, as well. I mean, there are young Catholics that are looking to this man for spiritual advice, and and when, when that was done, because we we our job isn't well, to expose I, home, home as predators. A, what as a Catholic though, you know, you you also care about other Christians. I'm sure. Well, yeah, you know, I know course. that there's. I know you have differences with Protestants and even even the Orthodox Christians, but. For example, in, in my understanding, uh, you know, the Pope and stuff fixed up or mended a lot of relationships with the Orthodox Church 
back in the 60s or something. So you don't want to see them get preyed on by Orthodox priests or Protestant pastors. This is sick. I mean, not anybody in general, but particularly not Christians. These are, these are, and that's the thing. These things are extremely hard to ignore. Yeah. Um, you know, but, but my, my, my only point is, is that our focus is the Catholic Church. We don't we don't have people coming in and talking to us about Protestant stuff. We focus on stuff going on, the going on in the Catholic Church. But you can even see in the documentary that that, you know, the way that the way that Jesse propositioned Patrick for sex the first time, it was word it, I, at least almost there might have been one difference in the word word for word. The same proposition that Father Deland made. So I think it was a 17, 16 or 17 year old boy that he was talking to on the phone. Like what um, he, he said something like, what do you want to do? about?" Yeah, this? what do you want to do? And then the guy's like, I, I don't know, just like you were when you first when you were first proposed. And then he's like, no, what do you want to do? Yeah. Is he, you see is that? That's the exact same thing. There's only so many ways to. There's only so many ways to prey on people, you know. And, and it's not surprising to see these similarities in two completely unrelated cases. And a lot of people that watch the video are like, "Well, these two things are completely unrelated." No. Yeah, that's the point. They are unrelated, physically, but not spiritually. It's a spiritual thing. Exactly. Um, regarding, you know, somebody said I just saw someone in the chat said that Jesse is innocent until proven guilty, and I, I just want to say address that real quick. First of all, I never was going after him in a court situation. You know, I'm not saying what will happen in the future, but I certainly have not intended to go after him in court. What I wanted to do was first warn any other people that were that Jesse might have been preying on at the time, and I figured there were some at least. I wanted to warn them as best I could without being true too obtrusive about it at first. And then I also wanted to warn Jesse to stop what he's doing. And I told him on the phone at some point. You need to come clean with your congregation. What I would, I believe, he should do is step down. I would, I think, he should disband Bond because yes, yes. Even, even if he, even if he was to just step down, there's no serious elder structure at Bond. There's no serious oversight at Bond. You have basically people who are loyal to him, like Hake and like others. It's a cult. Who, yeah. who are loyal to him, and 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 if Jesse stepped down in person, it's kind of like Barack Obama stopping his two terms and putting Joe Biden into office. It's going to still be the Obama agenda. I want to make clear that I've, I've met Hake at Bond 2021 in Orlando, Florida last year, and I think that he is fully aware of this, and I think he's having sex with Jesse Lee Peterson. That's just my opinion based on meeting know. him, but that's that's my opinion. Yeah, I have no they, even, they, even as a reporter and an investigator, I don't know, but I can say what Robert, Sant Robert Santner's story appeared credible to me. Well, yeah, it yeah. appeared credible to me once again, like like we never we didn't say at the end, Jesse Lee Peterson is guilty. You know, um, as a reporter, I, I wouldn't be doing my due diligence if, if, if I were to say something like that. I, I'm seen, not a reporter. I'm an entrepreneur and I'm claiming this is 100 percent legitimate, that the fundamental allegations are true. And I'm willing and openly challenging Jesse Lee Peterson to sue me over this. And I've stated that in writing. I'm not playing. You're I've told this. You, you I've told this. percent free to do that. I've told her yeah. to I've told her this who no longer works at Bond who is Samuel, by the way, recently disclosed on Tony Bruno's channel um, about two days ago, that, and Hermaeus confirmed this with me to an extent on text I have in writing, that he was one of the top guys at Bond. I've known him for a couple of years now. Hermaeus is a great guy. I've known him for years too. Hermaeus is, yeah. is, a, Hermaeus is a friend of mine. He's, you know, he's a good guy in my opinion. I don't think yeah. he still works there anymore, by the way. No, no, he left and Samuel disclosed. This is Samuel, right? Hermaeus told me that he left Bond in April. He didn't. He told me the reason why was that he wanted to start his own PR agency, his own marketing. So he disclosed to me very recently, and this was surprising to me, that he left Bond in April of this year. Samuel disclosed on video the other night uh, from the documentary on Tony Bruno's channel that Hermaeus, number one, Samuel went to Hermaeus about these problems. Hermaeus confronted Jesse about these problems. Hermaeus figured out that it was real, and he left Bond basically immediately. This is this is so he no longer works. So it's a fact. I have that in writing. Samuel disclosed and confirmed that to me, and then disclosed on video in public just the other night that the reason Ermias left was because of these this problem. So I don't think Ermias was uh, having sex with Jesse. I don't think he was. I think there's a mixture of people at Bond who are aware of this and who are not aware of this, and it's a big secret. All right? I believe personally, as an opinion, not as a fact, but as an opinion. That Hake is fully aware of it and having sex with Jesse. That's my honest observation is seeing them interact in person and talking to Hake, Hake face to face. Yeah. I can't well, prove that, but that's my honest um, estimate or guesstimate based on what I've seen. Yeah. I don't think Hermaeus was having sex, but no, I do think I he became aware this, of this, this and, does and he this left. Does, 
yeah, this does lend to a point made in the documentary and you know, yeah. how he would, how, how the grooming, the grooming, the alleged grooming that was going on in, um, in bond where he would, where he would come or where, where he would come on to somebody just a little bit, just kind of feel test the waters and stuff. And when he he's realized a gr- he's a groomer, he's a groomer. That's, that's, I think that's what grooming is really. You test to see who yeah, he's who. testing the waters. He probably tested yeah. the waters in a way that Ermius may not have even known about. And because of that, you know, Ermi, he never pursued Ermius and Ermius had no idea what was going on. This, this can happen. This sort of I, thing I agree. can happen. I, I can't agree. just assume that he knows something. And once that, that's just me well, giving Ermius the benefit of the doubt here. Nick yeah, Gonzalez might Nick Gonzalez might not know either. I don't know who knows yeah. and who doesn't know per se. Correct. Yeah, um, and, and, and just as far as James and Ermius are concerned, um, Ermius, like I said, is a friend, and I'm not going to disclose our private conversations right now or what you know Ermius has said to me, but but I do say that he's a, a good guy, and I'm not going to roll him under a, a bus in any way. If he wants to come out with whatever, that's going to be on him. I want to add too that I have never had a problem with Ermius. He has been my main point of contact at Bond for years, and he's always been professional with me and respectful, and I have never once had a problem with this guy. Yeah. And he did not disclose to me why he left Bond, uh, except that he wanted to do his own uh, business. But Samuel disclosed on his own on video two days ago that this is the reason he or Mayus left Bond was okay. that he found out the truth. Okay. And, um, yeah. and as far as James Hake goes, again, James Hake to me was always a decent person. He always, I always felt like James was a decent guy. I, I thought he knew him pretty well. Now, after this stuff came out, he uh, he told a mutual friend of mine of ours that I was a liar. So I called James up to ask him about that and to say, how could, why would you call me a liar? And James never answered. Now I've also sent James some of my articles along the way and he's never, ever responded to me. So what I believe has happened with James is that James came to bond as a very shy kind of guy. James is Hake, James Hake. Hake. Sorry, okay. James Hake. He came to bond as a very shy kind of guy. And Jesse helped turn him into this kind of alpha male personality. But I think a lot of it was kind of like just kind of copying Jesse, so to speak. Yep. And to me, God makes you strong. If you're going to be strong, it's because the Holy Spirit's working through you. And I know you're not a religious guy, Anthony, but this is just me speaking. God makes you strong. The Spirit makes you strong. Other, another human being, in my opinion, cannot make you strong. They can give you some good advice and things like that, but they can't change your inner self. And I think what happened with James is that he became kind of a Jesse clone or whatever. And and his whole personality is wrapped up now in Jesse. So if Jesse was to be attacked and Jesse melted down, the, pho- the phony personality instead of inside of James would melt down, too. That's what I think is going on with James right now. Yeah. Um, I want to comment on something that was mentioned just a couple minutes ago, and it's the extravagant nature of the skepticism of the critics. So it is pretty publicly is just pretty split. Like the video itself on my channel, anyway, the documentary, uh, which is the highest viewed version of it on the internet right now. Proud of that. Proud to help out. I suppose is BS. Um, it has a uh, about sixty-two percent like ratio to dislike. So it is It is still mostly positive. It's almost two-thirds positive. But of the detractors who are, and due to negativity bias, people are much more prone to lashing out when they feel something negative, when their cult leader or their, you know, their father figure is attacked on the internet with very serious, incredible allegations. They lash out, and they're, they're more prone to speak up than people who are like, yeah, this is legit. Like, I believe this. I'm believing the evidence in my own eyes, my ears. And they're, they're logically, too, following what's happening here. So I want to say this. A lot of the detractors, what they're claiming, that this is some elaborate criminal civil conspiracy and Jesse is a major threat to the establishment with his shadow banned YouTube channels. This is not even plausible. Okay, Hillary Clinton and George Soros didn't skydive out of a plane with duffel bags full of cash and grease this right wing Catholic organization and go and have a bunch of people go on video camera where they could be liable for defamation and get sued to bankruptcy. Yep. And and state of, which is what that would be. That didn't happen. There's no chance in hell, not a snowball's chance in hell, that all these every word of this documentary is a lie, and that Jesse didn't have sex with these people and do these things. And it's it's stupid that anyone believes that. On top of that, let me say this: I, Jesse has. Not, we'll go into his one minor response yet. His little sentence that he did before he deleted it. 
Jesse has not made a single public statement about this in public yet. So when they say they believe Jesse or something, what do you believe? Believing what? He has an answer. <laughs> he has an answer. There's no, there's no yeah, counter. The only thing you can believe is that he's ignoring the allegations. That's if, right. If, if one side, if one side is doing videos like this, or I'm doing a live stream here, it's, it's a little mm -hmm. bit vulnerable, right? Yeah. Um, and we did all the talks with Joseph and all the stuff we put out. And there's five of us talking out here. We yeah. put all the stuff out there. We put our names on the line. And yeah. what I've told people many times too is I'm married. Hello. I have a family. I have a son. You think I'm some kind of fool that I would put all that at risk to try to go after this guy? I'd have to be so burning with, with hatred out of my mind that I'd yep. forget the fact that I have a family. There's a yeah. risk here. And it's not a risk-free proposition. Correct. And so we put ourselves out there. Jesse has not answered a single question. If anything, watch the Martin Francis videos and your guys' videos. He's been running like hell when he's confronted. This guy pretty much looked like he caused an accident on Pico Boulevard because he was running away from uh, from uh, from Martin so strongly. So if he's such an alpha male, why is, why is he running away from Martin instead of answering the questions? And then why would a group, why, why would a why would a Catholic group like church militants? And I, and, and I think I can speak for church militant when, when I, when I make this specific statement is, is why would we put our credibility with exposing at home, you know, homosexual predators in the Catholic church, people who cover up homosexual predation in the church. Why would we put our credibility on the line for some YouTuber that isn't even Catholic? Yeah. Why would we do that? Why would we waste all of our time putting, wasting our credibility just for some little pop gossipy journalism, piece, you know, piece that, that that's filled with liars of people that we paid off and stuff that's going to put other victims that we're other victims that we're trying to get, you know, shed light on their their say in things. Our credibility is the most important thing to us at Church Militant. We double check everything. We content right. review things. We legally review things. We make sure everything is 100% in order before we put out our reports. And if exactly. something in our report is wrong, we will issue a retraction of that thing. So it doesn't yeah. so, so so we our credibility is is pristine. So when we have a pristine credibility, why in the hell would we put it on the line? For some internet pastor. Yeah, yep. it, it doesn't make sense on any level to, uh, at all. But people, again, I think people have their own preconceived reasons. They are either Jesse followers or, I, or I'm not sure what else they could be other than Jesse followers, honestly. Even if they are, even if they are Jesse followers who are asking for hard evidence. What about the picture with Patrick wrapped around him lovingly? What about the instance in which his his, his Twitter account liked gay pornography? Gay well, pornography. Let, hang on, let's let's pull that up. I have that actually yeah, as we're, I was preparing some of this as we as we go. Uh, one moment. Uh, so here is the. Oh wait, I don't want. I don't want that one. Pulling it up right now. So this is the picture. Um, is this you, Patrick, in the photo? Uh, uh, let me see. You'll see. It. I don't see the photo. <laughs> on the screen. I was making fun of sticks there. No, that's that six, the six guy. That, no, no, that's, no. On on the right. Yeah, that sticks yeah. and hammer guy thought that he had the answers when he didn't know anything. Um, yeah, he's the a guy the, the, he, Yeah, he is. The guy on the right is uh, a guy that used to be at Vaughn and Kyle. I don't know if I can say his name. Can I legally say his name? I don't know. I, I know his first name. I know his last name, too. I'll just I don't say think I don't think stating a fact is putting you at liability, particularly someone's name, which is like just a fact of reality. I wouldn't worry about it personally. Okay. Well, anyway, all we say his first name is Kyle. OK, and he used to be at Bond. And at that time, I don't know what his age was, but he was fairly young, by the way. I don't know if anything happened between him and Jesse, but that would be a guy and other people I've seen along the way that would put question marks in my head, knowing what I knew later. Yeah. I mean, that picture is, if I saw that about anybody, any man who claimed to be heterosexual with two men, and I saw that, uh, I would have immediate suspicions that they that they were having sex or something. Like, that's about anybody, not just Jesse. And so I think that's for people, they don't want to be objective and try to disabuse themselves of being biased because they like Jesse or they like his message or his politics or whatever. No, that's a really, really, really suspicious photo. And yeah. on top, especially when it's paired with all the extended hugging and stuff like that that was uh, right. disclosed in the documentary, which I've seen Jesse do that kind of stuff in real life. Yeah. yeah. At and, my and, events. And, and liking the gay pornography image is, is the, is the other aspect well, of this whole thing. I mean, let's, let's pull that up one second. Um, oh, here it is. 
I am roasting sticks because I think he's just kind of a beta male and he, he is it. a he's a contrarian now just for to drama. He doesn't really care about this. I don't think yeah. he cares about the victims. I agree. His, his epistemology is bad and he's too stupid or stubborn to be objective yeah. about what's going on. Doesn't he worship Satan or something? Yeah, yeah, he's a Satan worshiper too, which is just oh, okay. really, really gotcha. weird and bizarre. Well, that's a credible, yeah. that's a credible source. Well, he's um, trying. He's trying to use too his position as a different religious background or whatever he is now, a Satan worshiper or whatever. As, well, as, as, a as, Satan, as a Satan worshiper, I assure you that homo predation is perfectly fine. Yep. It's a sacrament, isn't it? I'm pretty yeah. sure. <laughs> so let's let's be let's be clear here that this this happened about a year or two ago with this gay tweet thing. But someone what and the idea that Jesse has no access to his social media is delusional. There's no proof of that. People are alleging that Jesse has zero access. To to his own social media accounts with his own name. And he's just, oh, I'm old and black. I don't know what to do. I'm a boomer. This is all an act. He's a, he's a predator and a, and a fraud. What, I'm wouldn't, sure. Wouldn't, I'm sure. Not, what, what wouldn't not, wouldn't being a boomer, what, what, wouldn't a boomer like gay porn, not knowing that there's a record of what you like on Twitter, wouldn't that be something a boomer that doesn't know how to use Twitter would do? Yeah, exactly. And then they freaked out and they locked down the account. This is all documented when it happened. It was its own little deal on the internet. I think, a lot it's, of archived. Are... I think it's archived. I'm pretty sure yeah. that people can go and investigate for themselves. So why? So let's be clear here. Why did Jesse Lee Peterson or someone at Bond with direct access to his Twitter account like this gay tweet about OnlyFans? And I mean, that dude is sodomizing that guy's butthole. Like yeah, th this, yeah. this, ha this happened. This is real. This does not... A fact. It's not a fact in dispute. This happened. I like to call hard evidence. Yeah, yeah. So for those, so for those asking for hard evidence, I mean, what else do you want? And then on top of that, and on top of that, they, I was being told. I think I think it was Kino Casino that did a video on it. I don't know if this is correct or not. So sorry, Kino Casino, if this wasn't you. But if Kino Casino actually went on and unironically tried to tell me that that photo of Jesse with that other man was doctored. That's that's right. another thing that I heard that we doctored the photo. So let right. me get this straight. So this is so this is the position of the super sleuths over the internet that are trying to defend Jesse Lee Peterson. I actually sent this to somebody in a text message. I'll just read it out to you. So the photos doctored. The the the, the, <laughs> the people saying he was gay mm -hmm. are lying. The four other people that are saying that he targeted them are lying or that he's gay are lying. The tweet was most likely by someone else who runs his Twitter, and it was set to private for no reason at all after the gay tweet was done. That's your sleuthing? Yep. Is that what happened? Are you kidding me? Are it's you coke. kidding me? It's what more, more do you need? What yeah. more do you need? And like I said, for them, anything short of a gay porno starring five men and Jesse Lee Peterson will not be enough evidence for them. So sticks, you know, take a look at the hard evidence. Don't ignore it. Oh, and by the way, and, and that's and that's the other. And by the way, he in his video, I watched his video, by the way, in his video. He would say, oh, you're just complaining about him having long hugs with people. People are just complaining about him having long hugs with them. I was like, I'm pretty sure Patrick said a little bit more than that. I'm pretty sure Samuel said a bit more than that. But he decided not to add those specific details into right. his video, which tells yeah. me that this isn't about facts for him. It's about running cover for somebody. And That's Sticks, right. if you're listening right now, you're a scumbag. You know yep. what? I, I totally agree with that. And I even put a, a long answer on, on this guy's uh, his name is Sticks on his uh, on his stream because he purposely left out the evidence that made our point and he took the uh, weaker, for lack of a better term, evidence and used that. Uh, and, and you are a scumbag if you do that with something this serious. Yep. This is a little meme we put up, by the way, of Sticks uh, being Commissioner Gordon in uh, The Dark Knight running cover for Harvey Dent. <laughs> It just, it just amazes me that you could make a reaction. And once again, why didn't you make a reaction video sticks to the whole documentary? Why did you just go on and present only the evidence that you found compelling to your point, which by the way, it wasn't even compelling to your point. You just yeah, well, lied. You just lied. Even, Unless he title... didn't watch it. I can, I can accept this. If he didn't watch it and just made a video running cover based on what he heard from other people, I could totally understand why he said the things that he said in those videos. And then I would welcome him to just go ahead and watch the video himself. Yeah. Well, why did he also call it a manosphere? Now he clarified that in his video, he didn't state that I produced the documentary, blah, blah, blah. But that isn't, I didn't claim that. It's the title that is fake news. Most, I've seen sticks, I'm pretty sure comment on this. 
that one of the main ways fake news works is not always just the content, it's the title. Because most people read the headline, they look at a picture, they read two sentences, and they leave. Yep. So what did a lot of fans do on Six's channel? Most of them didn't even watch Six's video. They watched the title, they opened it for 10 seconds, and then they went in comments. Yeah, you go, Sticks. Clank, yep. clank, clank. I'm a clanker. Her, her, her. All right, all these idiots, right? Well, they read the, the title, which was Manosphere Hit Piece. Church Milton is not a Manosphere organization. You guys barely know I, what it I, is. I didn't know much about you guys beforehand. <laughs> I, right. I, I think I'd seen you like a couple times beforehand, and I used some video of of you because you guys are like That's one not. of the main. You had the main videos of Jesse sitting around with young men. I didn't. I didn't use yeah. that to try and highlight that Twenty One Studios is bad or that you know yeah. that, that Anthony Dream Johnson's bad or anything along those lines. We yeah. we just put it in there because there's video of him with young men, and I didn't even know it was the Twenty One Studios convention. Yeah. One, yep. one thing, so, one, one thing to understand about Jesse in this whole lying business is Jesse lies a lot. I've always known that. Anybody around Bond who goes there, who's even friendly with him in any way, is on his side. Will, uh, will, would if you ask them honestly, they would admit that he lies. At least if you're on the inside of Bond, you know that he lies a lot. But what I always mistook it for was that Jesse was just being so wise. He was so like, you know, if, if the if the SS comes for uh, and says, do you have any uh, Jewish people here? You lie to them. Right. Or whatever. So I always took that at, and believed in my own head. that Oh, he's just such a wise person that he lies. Um, did you if never tell your wife that you had um, that you cheated on her would be one. Now, he's proud of that. Some of his lies he's proud of. So he's he, he lies on a regular basis. And the more that I step back and realize it, it had nothing to do with just being wise. It had to do with him just being a compulsive liar. Yes. Yeah. So you prey on young men. You say you, you make the argument that theologically that you can't necessarily sin with your body, only with your spirit. And on top of and then on top of that, you allow them to go into this silent meditation in which they are supposed to doubt all of their thoughts. You put all of that together, and on top of creating an organization that's supposedly built to help young men and what do you have you have a mess you have the perfect storm yeah i want to um comment on this thing here too this is from an interview i actually did with jesse in orlando when he came earlier in 2021 to a republican conference people can go on my channel the video is still up it's just a picture of it's a video we did and it's one of his typical shirts about having sex out of wedlock stop doing it you know blah 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 which i don't think so, good message anymore. good message by the way I don't Good think he's, don't have sex out of wedlock. Anthony, but. I don't think he says that anymore uh, currently, does he? Uh, I think he does. I mean, he has shirts he still wears. He's worn shirts yeah. like this for years on his show. But yeah. I want to comment that allegedly, in my understanding of Jesse, before, before the documentary and now, and for the years I've known him, in my understanding, he has been celibate because of Jesus and Christianity for over 30 years. He's not supposed to have sex out of wedlock. Obviously, he openly rails against that. For everyone, men and women both, right? Slut makers, women are sluts, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Satan is your daddy. Don't have sex out of wedlock, right? So he hasn't been married ever. He did uh, allegedly have one son a long time ago. He does have a ago. son. Who I, I've met his son. He's a, he's a nice young guy. He does have a son. Okay. So since then, though, he's never been married. He should not. And he can't watch porn, which is also a sin. And he can't have sex with men or women, which in his case would be a sin in either case. So you're telling me this guy is a sinless monk or a nun, basically, who hasn't had sex or even an orgasm in over 30 years? That's what I'm supposed to believe when he runs an organization with exclusively men? This is extremely... If I heard about this, my friend Jack Donovan commented publicly, I was looking for the tweet. He's one of our speakers who's actually gay. He's the only speaker that we have that I knew was gay anyway. He doesn't hide it. He doesn't lie about it. He doesn't BS about it. And he doesn't make a big deal out of it. And it doesn't interfere with him speaking at our events. He's met Jesse a few times at our events briefly. I don't think they had any other kind of uh, dialogue or anything, mm -hmm. but he thinks it's extremely suspect on that. This fact alone that Jesse proclaims to be celibate for over 30 years, never once uh, masturbating, never once having sex with men or women or any of that is what he pr publicly currently claims is a fact of his life. There's almost no chance this is true. There are celibate nuns. I told Joe yesterday, one of my aunts is a Catholic nun for over 50 years. I believe she's been celibate for 50 years. I could be wrong, but as far as I know, that's the truth. And I'm sure there are many other men and women who actually do this. It's just really, 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 really rare and really difficult. That's part of why it doesn't, it doesn't happen. The yeah. urge to have sex is extremely strong.
and that he, you know, is wearing shirts like this and yelling about forgive your mama and Satan is your daddy and all the homos are going to hell. And then he hasn't even had an orgasm. And since uh, Ronald Reagan was president, you got to be kidding me. Like, this is extremely far fetched alone. Yeah. I, I don't know if he said that they were going to hell. He said they're going to hell. I don't think he said that, but he's said some a lot of other stuff too. I don't I'm pretty that. sure he said he that. He said the I spirit, mean, he said the spirit of homosexuality is of the devil. Oh yeah, he's definitely said that. Um, yeah. Satan is a, your daddy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it doesn't it doesn't it, it's not obviously not true. And I don't know if he said that he hadn't masturbated to, I don't want to get gross here with people, but uh that might be listening, but um, I don't know if he said that or not, but certainly he's been saying he hasn't been having sex. And obviously that was a huge lie. Yeah. Well, time. Well, yep. uh, yeah. yeah. And, 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 and I'm sure he's, you know, I'm sure he's going to come up with some stupid excuse. Oh, you can only sin in the spirit or, Oh, you know, uh, uh, it's not sex when it's with a man. We've heard that one before too, from people. I mean, wow. He, he, wow. Right. The only, the only sex is, is obviously the natural way you know and so therefore this other stuff isn't that I, we, we, these are similar things that people have heard that groomers will use to try and justify their actions while being christian specifically in pastor roles or or priest roles things like that so th this is just these are just the things that you hear i want to show people real quick an email i put this on twitter so this is not new but a lot of people watching haven't seen it this is the official email i sent to bond and hermaeus uh to you know jesse peterson's crew on saturday night uh, about 9.42 p.m. my time this past Saturday after I watched the documentary several times, after I studied the body language and eye contact and the vocal tonality repeatedly of all of you, all the accusers and everyone in it, all of you were coherent, you were calm, the allegations were not outlandish. You know, you guys weren't claiming that Jesse took you on his secret yacht and private jet and put on a mask and grabbed whips and like some Amber Heard, you know, hyper dramatic nonsense. A lot of the allegations were really mundane. My friend, Pastor Michael Foster said, and that's part of what makes them very believable is when people are lying, they go to level 10 out of 10. Right. And it's just, it's like, they watch too many movies basically and too much CSI and all this stuff. Right. That's why they want like all this extreme evidence. They're like, Oh, I want the videotape, the semen sample, the blood sample, yeah. the written testimony and a confession. And I want it on video and I want it signed with an affidavit. And I want it now. It's like I, they're I idiots. Thinking, I was thinking that too, Anthony, that I think people are a little bit too uh, into mass media and yeah. they watch too many of these shows because they don't think, like I said earlier, they don't think about how it actually is to go through something. Yes. You're not yeah. thinking the way that they think that they that you're supposed to be thinking. <laughs> but anyway, well, I want to point out well, that, hang on, Joe, I didn't, uh, by the time I went after Jesse and made my final decision on the truth here on Monday, this past Monday at around what, 11 a.m. or something, I gave them a window of opportunity, and I was very formal and professional here. Hey, Hermes, this documentary by Church Militant was sent to me last night. This film pictures myself, features footage from our events with our brand visible, pictures one of our speakers, and one of the accusers is a former 21 Summit attendee. Upon review, I find these allegations credible. Does Bond or Jesse Lee Peterson intend to issue a formal statement on this matter and or take prompt legal action with an attorney? Please advise. Thank you. So I gave them 36 hours to, and I texted Jesse as well. I have his personal cell phone number. So I texted them that. And I, Hermaeus then, I'm going to show you now what Hermaeus said to me. He texted me as well. Because uh, he no longer works at Bomb. He's so close to these people. He then said, hey, Anthony. He got back to me uh, later that night on Saturday. Hey, Anthony, I, do, I don't not know. I think that's a typo. I'll pass your question along to Jesse. Best Hermaeus. He then texted me as well and confirmed that, that he got the email and he would forward it to Jesse. So I gave people who think I just came out blasting guns blazing like a cartoon character. This is not reality. I reviewed, I first got this on a Friday night. I spent time listening to it then. I was shocked at what I was hearing. I knew some of the guys in the documentary, Samuel, obviously. I, I was like, let me go to sleep, think on this, sleep on this, wake up, review it you know, five times over, talk to my friends, study each person, and then contact Bond, contact. Uh, I didn't know Hermaeus left at this point, not until he, he didn't tell me until after this. So I was very slow, fairly slow about this. I was like, let me let me go through kind of the basic professionalism here, asking them directly as a business colleague who they paid me thousands of dollars. Are you going to issue a public statement denying this or even addressing it? Do you have an attorney you're going to do something with? I was I wouldn't go public. If he had told me we're lowering up and there'll be a statement on Tuesday, please be patient. I would have said nothing. I would have said, OK, let me let me see where this goes and I'm going to be play this by the books. Right. 
Yeah. And now, Jesse, I'm, of course, didn't get back to me by text. I got no response by email. And even now, a week later, there's still nothing, 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 nothing. Like Jesse says, right? Never, never, ever, never, 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 whatever he says. <laughs> yeah. No, nonsense. I now, think, now I what's think interesting, you, Pat, well, hold on one second, Pat. Now, the we did the same thing. And we gave him, we, we, I, I believe I, uh, it, the, the documentary came out on Thursday. And we, on Tuesday night, had sent him a, sent him a email. I can read you the email right now. I have it right in front of me. Nice. Um, and I sent this directly to Jesse's email. And I also sent uh, it to his, uh, you know, producer, personal assistant. I don't know what his relationship was. But when he came to the studio, he brought Nick Gonzalez with him. So I sent it to Nick Gonzalez yeah. as well. And I can confirm with you that on my cell phone that I have text messages from him asking for his email and then immediately sending him this email after texting with him about it. Yeah. So this, this was sent to him. It would be very shocking if he never saw it. Well, clearly this is a Hillary Clinton cover up, and you yeah, guys are right. greased with 800 grand in cash in a duffel bag. Like dirt. Yeah, I'd have a much nicer studio. That, that's what people tell us. Um, yeah. You know, yeah. Um, the thing but, about, oh, but Patrick, hold on one second. Yeah. I want to read this email right. to everybody. I, I read, Dear Jesse, some of your friends reached out to us immediately after the Why Aren't You Catholic special and said they enjoyed Michael's debate with you. They also provided some shocking allegations against you personally. I've been assigned a roughly 30-minute investigation into their claims. I've spoken with five alleged witnesses and purported victims already, all your former friends and former members of Bond. I wanted to give you a chance to respond to the allegations before our 30-minute report on Bond and yourself airs on Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time on June 16th at churchmilitant.com. You'll have until Thursday, June 16th at noon Eastern Time to respond. If not, we will be forced to release the port report without your comment. We would be forced to. We, we, we want your comment. Please provide it. Question number one, are you a homosexual, same-sex attracted? Have you ever engaged in any homosexual acts, especially in the past 30 years? If yes, were these homosexual acts with your former friend, Patrick Rooney? Were you in a homosexual relationship with Patrick Rooney from approximately 2005 to 2016? Did you ever deflect or mislead anyone about being in a homosexual relationship with Patrick Rooney? Have you ever touched Samuel Arambula's genitals? Did you ever have any form of sexual relations like oral sex with Trayvon Chapman in approximately the past 30 years? Did you ever put your hand in your pants in front of Robert Santner in approximately the past 12 years? Did you ever ask to see Armand Martikian's genitals in approximately the past 30 years? And question 10, have you ever put your hand under Martin Francis's pants in approximately the last 30 years? If you would like to respond to any of this video, we'd certainly accommodate that request. But again, it would have to be completed by no later than 12 p.m. Eastern time on Thursday, June 16th. I'm also CCing Nick Gonzalez, your assistant, to ensure you receive this email. Sincerely, Joseph Enders, senior producer, churchmilitant.com. And the date right here, 6-14-2022 at 7.51 p.m. Very good. Very good. Hard, evi hard evidence and fair. Yeah. yeah. Um, I wanted to we say- We gave him a chance to respond. We gave him a chance to respond. I don't think he will. Let, Jesse will not respond unless he's completely pushed to the wall and feels like he has to. Uh, first of all, Jesse's a very stubborn person. I've known that for years. People have said that about him. Uh, people might mistake some of that for strength. He's just he's he's got a big ego. He's very stubborn, and so he will he will just kind of drag his feet and just set his feet and almost take pleasure in the fact that he feels like he doesn't have to answer anything. He's almost got like a little twinkle in his eye as he does like his church yeah. or his radio or whatever. He's basically saying, "Hey, you know, I don't have to tell you guys anything." And so if his congregation, really, that's what it comes down to. If his congregation is going to be so blind and so pathetic that they can't even challenge him and they're afraid to say something because they know they're going to get attacked by Jesse, who's going to come back and call him a beta or call them a homosexual, um, because that's what he does, right? Um, but if they're in a position where they can't even ask him basic questions, and the way, and the way he'll do, he'll talk during, and I just saw his, his last church, he says kind of pseudo spiritual things like um, uh, he says there's no uh, past. OK, there is no past. Uh, there's no future. There's only the present. There is no past. So he's using spiritual things again in a way to make him feel OK. In other words, if I haven't if I haven't groomed someone 
or uh, been a, a sexual predator against somebody in the last five minutes, it qualifies as the past. So in yeah. his own mind, he's making it okay, and he's making his people afraid to ask any questions because they they know that he's going to come back and attack them if they ask anything. And that's really, really pathetic. This goes back to the groomer behavior that we were talking about earlier. This isn't uncommon. And it, this, isn't an, this isn't an uncommon tactic. And we saw it with Father DeLand in the documentary. So uh, you mentioned that if Jesse won't respond unless his back is up against the wall, he has given a tiny, tiny response that was then deleted. We'll, we need to look at it in a minute. Um, I want to state that I don't have any uh, targeted or special malice for Jesse. He's someone I considered a business colleague and a distant friend until a couple days ago. Um, before I realized what had been happening, how he had betrayed all of our fans, the Manosphere, Christianity, Bond, preyed on you know sp specific men, lied to my face, et cetera, et cetera. What I do want to say is I don't have any particular malice against Jesse, but I do hate all frauds and all predators. And I, it's beyond any shadow of a doubt to me. It is 100% confirmed in my mind, I'm certain on this, that he is a predator and most likely a psychopath or sociopath in a clinical cluster B DSM-5 sense, right? But on top of that, I have every intention of putting Jesse and pressing him up against the wall uh, in a public PR sense to force him to respond to this. And if I have to get an attorney involved, I'll do it. I have an attorney who's licensed in Florida and California and yeah. through my own channel, and which is bigger than Jesse's, by the way, uh, which is part of the reason I wanted to step up and utilize and have courage on this. I will push Jesse with memes and videos until he confesses, until he confesses and or at least addresses the, the situation. And I will not stop. I am insanely persistent. I am more stubborn than Jesse, and that's going to work against him in this case. And I will not stop. I, I understand completely, Anthony, and I and I praise you for what you're doing. As I said, I think before we even did this interview, the only disagreement I had is I'm a Christian. I believe in forgiveness. That doesn't mean sure. I'm forgiving Jesse actions i know these are not forgivable actions but i must wow, forgive him in my, i must forgive him in my heart in terms of what i do i mean i'm doing a show here i'm not holding back and i, I think god bless you for for your attitude and going out for him very hard here i'm just saying it's not good for me or anybody to hate him inside because that stuff stuff will hurt you and it'll hurt your family so i have been sure. walking a, i've been walking a line here I've been as open as I can about what this guy's doing, but I also have a family that um, I need to be right with. And if I'm angry towards Jesse, it will affect them. So I have to yeah. kind of walk a line of not hatred, but as far on the points as possible and not giving an inch, if you understand where I'm coming from. Yeah, and you're totally entitled to your opinion, and I'm not going to hold it against you, like I told you in email, for being consistent to your deepest convictions as a Christian. Uh, and, and other whatever other um, personal philosophies that you hold dear to you. So I don't mind that uh, with the forgiveness and you're in a much different position than me. You actually were directly involved with this way more than I was as a, you know, having to speak at my conference and stuff like that. But I'm looking at it uh, as an objectivist, as an atheist and as a man and as an American and as a patriot who loves my country. And I see this right wing grifter stealing money from people through lies and deception and basically fraud as a religious fraud who preys on hurt wounded men. The Manosphere is a place where a lot of hurt wounded men go to. That's why Jesse had a lot of overlap with it. Not always with drugs and child molestation so much as like really nasty relationships, bad divorces, family court, um, even like Me Too stuff, really truly false allegations that hurt men, college guys, older men, whatever. So there's a lot of that in the Manosphere and it angers me uh, sincerely and genuinely and I have believed that I have a right, in my opinion, to this anger and this rage that well, I feel. You, that you do, do as you see fit, Anthony. I wouldn't recommend the yeah. rageful side. I admire the uh, sure. balls to the wall kind of side of going after yeah. what you think you should do. I, I'm totally on board with that. Let me just say something. My rage, about hang on. My rage has subsided a little bit. I mean, it was really the first 48 hours where I was like, yeah. it was it was the betrayal hit me personally. It's yeah. I've, I've known this guy. I've had long calls with Jesse. I gave him advice on where to move in Orlando. I had an hour long phone call with Jesse maybe three months ago at my, uh, about moving to Orlando. Like I this is someone I cared about. I get it. I'm, I get it. I'm I right it. there. I'm right there with both of you guys, by the way. I, I, I liked Jesse too. And I, and I considered him, you know, after visiting the studio, a little bit, a little bit of a friend. I mean, I had already, I had interviewed him two years ago on my podcast and he was one of the, 
He yeah. was one of the few bigger personalities to actually come on and talk to me. We had a great discussion on the hierarchy of the family. It was wonderful. We learned we learned a lot about it. And he would and he even complimented me at the end of the stream. Go watch it for yourself. Um, and, and 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 even said you're a very knowledgeable young Christian. This that or the other. I, I, I didn't want to. I, I, I didn't want to see this. I didn't want to see these these things be true. I didn't want any of these bad things to happen. But there was obviously yeah. this 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 justified anger. And just to give the Catholic theological take on this thing, you know, Jesus chased people out of the temple with a with a whip. He got angry. You know, you can be yeah. angry for just reasons. In fact, uh, one of the most famous Catholic philosophers, Saint Thomas Aquinas. Sure, you're familiar with it if you like philosophy. Oh would yeah. Say would say that it's actually it's actually vicious to not be angry at at, at injustice. Well, so, let's let's you, Patrick, what's up, Patrick? Go. Just my last word on the anger thing, because we could probably talk all day on anger alone. <laughs> but but I would say this, and, and it's funny because I'm in I'm in agreement with Jesse on the anger issue, and that's and, and other people. But ang you just notice for yourself, whatever it is, whatever you think about it, just notice for yourself. Like you say, you kind of calmed down, Anthony, over a few days. Just notice if you're angry inside, it hurts you. You know, it's like it's like directed at somebody else, but it's in your body. People get cancer from stuff like that. So I would just watch that and notice how it's hurting you. That's all I would say about anger. Yeah. Now, I mean, one thing I want to say. I will just a quick response. I do believe that if anything taken to excess can harm you. And yeah. if I am endlessly angry and rageful or wrathful, uh, which I, is that a cardinal sin? I think. Yes, yes, it is. Yes, well, yeah, I'm not. Deadly sins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not. In, I'm not interested in uh, destroying myself with like psychological poison. So right. a little bit of what I'm saying is hyperbole, but mostly it's just courage and what I believe is morally righteous, which is to take well, down a fraud. All that is all that a hundred percent. I understand. I'm a hundred percent behind all that. Okay. Uh, said. Now let me say something about the grift. Uh, again, I think it's pretty funny that people are accusing us of wanting. To, first of all, nobody tried to take him to court here. Now, if that happens in the future, so be it. But that wasn't anybody's intention to take him to court. I wanted to expose what was going on to see if, if other guys was this was going on with other guys and i wanted jesse to be to back off and know that people were watching him that's that's what i was doing um as far as like what are we gaining out of this i mean obviously i don't see any any gain um people say i'm making money and i'm making speech somebody said the other day i'm making a bunch of speeches on this i haven't made any speeches on this uh it's funny oh, I think your, you're your internet uh oh okay, can, you're can you repeat can you repeat that well yeah. I'm, Okay, you lost the last thing I said? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I, I'm just saying that people are coming after us for gaining something. Uh, I was making speech. Uh, Patrick, your internet is freezing up really bad all of a sudden. Oh. Um, I don't know why, but uh, it'll probably smooth out in a minute. But right now, it's really rough. We cannot hear anything you're saying. I'm going to open a yeah. door that's near uh, going to the router. Yeah. Hopefully that helps. Sorry about that. It might. Is that helping at all right now? Am I back? You're back. Yep, You're back. for now. Okay. Sorry about that. Anyway, I'm, I'll make it quick here. I'm just saying that people are accusing us of. Crap. I haven't got money. I haven't made, not making speeches. Uh, any, but the funny thing about it is the person they're defending is like a class A grifter. This guy's made millions of dollars on, on what he's done, including raising money to move three times. That he's, he's raising, he, he just sent out another letter the other day. I know people that he sent the letter to asking for money the third time where they haven't moved the first two times. Where did that money go to? Yeah, it's a big scam. Big scam. I've seen other people do this too. They try to raise money on false pretenses like this. Yeah. They just really, make up excuses. It really makes you wonder how, it really, it really makes you wonder how uh, serious, serious he is about anything that he believes at this point. And that's the problem when yeah. these sorts of allegations come out with basically, you know, any public figure who's known for having strong opinions on strong issues. When you find out he is not just a hypocrite, but the worst type of hypocrite on one issue, then everything else that he's doing comes into question. And, and, and it's actually interesting because like, like, like I had said before in the stream, Patrick will actually defend that point and say that he actually does believe what he says he believes on top of it. Yeah. Yeah. And well, I think he, he believes it. I just think that the devil, as I said in my original article, that, you know, the devil got, got, is working through him. That's the way I see it. I, 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 no, I think I, you, he's people can be very convincing if they believe their own stuff. And, and the, I think the most convincing people are the ones who believe their own stuff. 
tracking on there without any crunches. Your internet uh, froze up again, Patrick. Yeah. But it, um, yeah, I don't happen, if this keep, if this keeps happening, Anthony, you might start believing in the devil trying to shut them up, right? Yeah. <laughs> You might just have to, uh, it, it's probably going to smooth out again, but worst case, you could restart your computer real quick or your router. It might smooth it out. Um, let me let me move on here, though. I want to play yeah, um, the, the deleted clip that Jesse's. So Jesse's team is aggressively hiding on a factual basis on multiple fronts now. They blocked me on Twitter. They've turned the Bond channel, their smallest channel. It's about 30,000 subscribers. The Sunday church service has suddenly been switched to a members-only, paid-only yeah. chat. Yep. On their on their main channel, uh, the main Jesse Lee Peterson channel, um, the biggest one, I think, they've turned chat to being a subscriber only for five days or more. These are not normal chat regulations they have on their platforms. It's much more open usually. Yes. So on multiple fronts, they're hiding. And now what we're going to look at is a short 30-second video. I'm going to play it twice so everyone gets a real clear hearing of it. When Jesse was accused, or not accused, but questioned about this the other day on a show by a woman I don't know. And she was, uh, Jesse did respond to it very, very briefly. And it's since been deleted through what I believe the YouTube editing tool on YouTube itself from the stream earlier this week. They specifically took it down when it was um, clipped on Twitter. So here it is for everyone to hear. It should be audio too. That should be good. Michelle is a first time caller out of Detroit. Michelle, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Hi, how are you today? All this well, Michelle. Thanks for calling. I had a question. I'm just kind of confused. Um, why haven't uh, you addressed the issue of uh, the gay documentary? Um, it's not concerning to me. She said she was a liberal. She was having doubts. She lied. What a wicked woman. Tony is out of fresh. Now, can I? I want to comment on that. Really, uh, one uh, before we. I want both of you to comment on it if you can. But one more time, I want to play it so everyone has a really clear understanding of what they're seeing. Here we go again. Michelle is a first-time caller out of Detroit. Michelle, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Hi, how are you today? All this well, Michelle. Thanks for calling. I, I had a question. I'm just kind of confused. Um, why haven't? Uh, you addressed the issue of uh, the gay documentary? Um, it's not concerning to me. She said she was a liberal. She was having doubts. She lied. What a wicked woman. Tony is out of... Joseph, your take? Yeah, so, I mean, the th first thing that... I think we talked about this over Messenger a little bit. Notice, notice how at the end that he says, he says she lied. She lied. She said she was a liberal. She was a liberal going through, you know, having questions or some, something along those lines. And, and, what, and a, what a wicked woman. What, what a wicked, wicked look at a, what a wicked woman for lying. Now, that, that what that tells me is that beforehand there was a process of vetting people before they come on air to yes. prevent them from asking questions about. This. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Meaning me, meaning that that's going on. And I know that for a fact, after you did a little bit of sleuthing, Anthony, we talked about this as well with yep. uh, with the help of your girlfriend or whatever it was. I can't remember exactly what it was. Yeah. But but that's and, and then he says and then he says the wickedness is there for simply asking a question about the thing. They're vetting people and they're blocking people. And I knew oh, yeah. that. In, I knew that instantly, by the way, after the first day it came out and there wasn't one super chat or one caller even asking about this massive thing that was going on in the background. And and and, and I think I even heard uh, I think it was Baked Alaska on stream when he was reacting to the comments. He's like, you really couldn't take 10 seconds to just say, hey, uh, I, you know, I watched the documentary uh, and I and, and it's and I deny this and then just move on. You know, we're, we're going to look um, we're going to look in a moment on when Jesse Lee Peterson hung up on my girlfriend on this past uh, Thursday. She called in through the show. And what you're saying is 100 percent true. I'm sure Patrick can testify to that as well as a former producer of the show. They have a vetting process on the phone when you call the when you call that phone number one eight 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 seven seven Jesse or whatever it is to call in on the show. And they ask you pretty aggressive questions right now. I don't know if that's always the case, but right now that's what they do. And they ask you, it's whoever the producer is. It's not Hake, it's the other guy with the beard right now. He asked my girlfriend a lot of questions on Wednesday when she called. And they accepted her then to go on the show. She was put on hold. And then the show ended before she could get through. 
she called in on Saturday. That's why that's what you guys are seeing here. This is her phone record. So she called in on that was on Wednesday. And then this is on Thursday, four times, and then seven. Because when you call in, sometimes you get like a beep because the producer's on the phone with someone else or something. So you got to call, 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 and then you get through. Call, 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 get through. So on Thursday, then when she did this, they put her through the vetting process again. She said that she called in the day before and the show ended before she could get on. And they just kind of went through the same process again. What are you calling about? What are you confused about? Where are you from? What's your name? Blah, blah, blah. Now, we did have her prepare a story to get through this process because it's manipulating. Because if you say like that woman, that's why she told, that's why she lied. Because if you say, or I want to ask about the documentary by Church Militant, they're going to hang up the phone immediately. Jesse, we're going to listen to the clip, hung up on my girlfriend live, immediately lied about it publicly in writing on the chat and publicly on video. They told her to call back, call back, and call back, and that's her middle name, uh, and so then she did. That's why there's so many calls, seven. And when she called back, they picked up. They started yelling at her because she lied to get through to ask him about the documentary. And then, then they hung up on her. And then they were screaming at her too, the guy, because because she did lie to get through. Yep. I don't care that because we have to lie to get through with the truth in this case to to get through their system, the filter. So then she kept calling back, and they just kept hanging up on her. And then finally, she gave up. But she was really mad. And I heard all this go down live, and I was recording it. I couldn't believe I was watching Jesse lie right through his effing teeth right through i knew he, he hung up on her oh she hung up she hung up everyone's in the chat everyone believed it they believed it even my friend tony bruno he's like oh why have her call back i'm like dude she didn't hang up he hung up the minute she asked about the documentary what they have is an audio delay system like tv um news networks do i've been on piers morgan like a big tv show and there was like a five second delay and i didn't understand that i'm like they must have the technology to not have to have good internet like what is the purpose of this right they do that to stop curse words and anything they don't want on the air. They have someone on the trigger button. That's what Jesse does. And he has been hanging up on people for years, I'm sure, when they ask something he doesn't like or says something he doesn't like. Oh, they hung up. Oh, the phone cut out. No, it didn't. They hung up and they lied about it. This guy is a... F and anyway, it makes me really mad. I'm going to tell you what I think his strategy is. Because um, obviously they've created a shield around them with all these tactics. Yeah, uh, I think Jesse's personality, I've always told Jesse uh, that he has wanted to be, he wants to be in a position, uh, it's not just a sex, he wants to be thought of as the teacher. He will tell you that he's just like you, oh, I'm just like you, don't treat me any different. But yet he tells you he's been sin free for 20, 30 years. So that's the way a lot of people got uh came to him because they wanted to find out what is this guy doing? What is the secret to be sin free? And they went to him and come to come to find out when all said and done is a fraud. He wasn't sin free at all, but that was, that was the pull to brought to bring people in that he was, he was sin free. So what he's doing is he's very interested in people seeing him a certain way as like a great teacher. He got a lot of his information from Roy Masters, of course, as we, you guys have uh, talked about a little bit on the, well, we didn't really talk about that too much on the video, but he learned a lot of stuff from Roy Masters and then kind of used that on people. He talks about a lot of truths, but a lot of the truths he doesn't really understand for himself. It's obvious he doesn't under understand those things. So I think what his goal is, he's going to keep creating a shield around himself, but you can't do that out in the internet and so forth because you, you, you need to grow. You know, you're an entrepreneur. You, uh, you understand that. You got to grow, but in order to grow, you kind of have to put yourself out there. But he's yep. not going to put himself out there, so it's going to go contract on him to the point of, I hate to say it this way, but it almost you know seems like Hitler in the bunker at a certain point. Like, <laughs> if you can be the if you can be the guru over, and you have to be a guru, but only over twenty people still, I think he'll take that in preference to actually um, uh, being honest enough to say what happened because that hit to his ego is going to be something he doesn't want to deal with. Yeah. Well, it could also destroy Bond. I mean, if he comes out and confesses his sins, confesses what he's done and repents, he might keep a small following, a fraction of what he has, 10, 20%, who knows. But if he comes out as a homosexual for the past 20 years, he's finished. He could lose Bond, go bankrupt. People there would be unemployed. Uh, I don't think Jesse would end up on the street necessarily, mm -hmm. but his life mm -hmm. would be over. It's just like Jack Murphy, who's a recent Manosphere before Jesse was the biggest manosphere grifter in history who came out as a, uh, a literal cuck and a gay porn star who was having sex with transsexuals 
urinating on his wife, like it, all on video, a lot of this stuff, audio, video, pictures. Um, it all started when he went on a big uh, Blaze podcast and he was accused and asked about the cuck stuff and he just lost it. And it was a big, it was the biggest internet meltdown in history. You guys should look it up if you're not familiar with it. What's the guy's name? Jack Murphy. I, I knew a little bit about this story. Uh, the, yeah. the, I, I, I had heard about it from yep. one of my friends. I'm not sure who it was, but they it were was talking shocking. about how he was caught. Yeah, and, and everybody, and, and it took everybody by surprise because I know that he was a big speaker on masculinity, and then everybody, yes. so there was just then came the memes, you know, after the fact, and he was pretty much it was over for him. Who yeah. do you think made all the memes? The meme master, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're really yeah. effective, but go ahead. Yeah, the, the memes yeah. are very good. Uh, can I say something here, Anthony, about uh, yeah, yeah. a general statement to some of the Bond people? Sure. Because um, some people say, and this is one of those frequently asked questions, but I kind of have to talk about it now. They say, well, Jesse's done all this good. You know, he's helped. And we've had uh, one guy who didn't even come forward because he said if it wasn't for Jesse, or at least meeting Jesse and getting known with Bond and everything, that he may be dead or in jail. And uh, a lot of people, th you know, Jesse helped them with a silent prayer and they helped them to forgive their parents. And so there's people that would say, hey, he's done all this good. Um, you really shouldn't say anything. I, I think we covered this a little bit in the beginning, but I just want to say it a little more openly. Oh, you shouldn't say anything about this guy because he's done all this good. And I would say, look, any way that Jesse's words or, or things he's you know, said to you have been helpful, I'm not here to take those things away from you. Um, what Jesse's helped me, he's helped my family, he's helped many people, but, and I don't want to take anything that he said that's truthful, that just struck something with you that helped you forgive or have a better life. I don't want to take any of that stuff away. It's all fine. But does that mean on the other side that because somebody has done some things that were helpful, that you're just going to turn a blind eye to the stuff that he's been doing and yep. maybe still doing and the kind of damage this guy can be doing to families? Um, if you're a friend, if you're a true friend of somebody, don't you tell them the truth to help them? Well, it's, it's rampant cowardice is what it is. It's cowardice. In my, and, I, and I'm far less charitable in my analysis than you are, Patrick. That's a nonsense. That doesn't matter how much good a person does in their entire life. If they do one heinous thing, they have irreparably like damaged their soul in a way that, in a way that makes them a heinous person. I think I think what's going are, on is that they're they're afraid of taking away from whatever alleged good Jesse has done, and I'm yeah. sure he has in some cases, especially yeah. on a personal basis. There's no doubt right? that he's done good. He's done but, good for me. But what if you guys are Christians? If Jesus was alive now on this earth, what would he say about what Jesse's done? I mean, this is this is horrendous. This is these are mortal sins, right? In Christianity, yeah, they're, I mean, they're this very, is terrible. It, Jesus. It, again, the Bible talks about sexual sins as being the worst sin, the sins to the body. The the body is considered the temple of the Holy Spirit. It's about as serious as you can get. Yeah, and 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 you know, from 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 the Catholic perspective, um, you know, uh, you know, th this is this is considered one of the most extreme sins of the flesh. I mean, we can look all throughout Scripture and find, you know, people talking about the abominations of homosexuality and how it would be better to, you know, hang, hang a millstone over someone's head than to touch a child or something along those lines, all regarding these different sorts of, um, uh, of abuses against the innocent. Now, obviously there was no kids involved in this specific scenario that we're aware of, that we're aware, that we're aware of. of, that we're aware of. That's true. Yeah. Now, um, but, but what, but what we kind of see is these are still the innocent that are being preyed on. Yes. And, 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 and looking at this from Jesus's perspective, you know, uh, I mean, praying on the innocent, I mean, what, what, what are you going to say to that? I mean, I, I'm sure there's a lot of, I'm sure, there, I'm sure there's a lot of, you know, salt of the earth people just across the world that would say off with his head. You know, you know what? This, I, I, I heard people say to me that are in Jesse's congregation that they don't, they don't want to lose the experience that they have. They want to be able to come down get together, talk about spiritual things, feel good, go out to lunch afterwards and have a social activity. I'm not knocking them for that, wanting that, but just understand what you're saying. I don't want to speak out or ask questions of him because I don't want to lose my experience is what they're telling me. That's they're extremely cowardly. selfish. That's extremely it's, selfish. It's I mean, extreme. I don't know what else to say. I don't know it's what else to say. That's it's just, absolute brazen cowardice. Yeah. It's they, they don't want to... There's a little, it, it takes this basic nuance that even a teenager could understand 
Jesse might say something true. I, I like President Trump. He says Trump is a great man and a great president. Okay, I agree with that. I believe that's uh, true. Like, I, that's not just my opinion. I think it's great. We can argue about it and debate it, whatever. That doesn't excuse him from being a psychopath and a fraud and a predator. Right. These things can exist at the same time. And these people who are immature and alleging elaborate conspiracies of church militant, you know, oh, George Soros and his buddies just dropped off duffel bags of cash for all these all these men who are just, you know, grinding an axe. And, you know, the Catholics are they don't like Jesse because he says Jesus didn't rise out of the tomb. So they set aside, you know, months out of their life and, you know, hundreds of hours of man hours and all these, you know, fraudulent victims to come put this huge conspiracy together. And I believe Jesse, who has said literally nothing on this yeah. case, basically, like these people are dumb. They're like little kids who watch too many movies. Or well, something. again, it like, tells you. Uh, yeah, we're not getting this. Your Pat uh, Patrick, your Internet just froze up. Totally frozen. <laughs> Okay, can you hear me now? Nope. Uh, you're coming back. Okay. You're back now. He... Is, he, is he there? Nope, you're gone again. Sorry, yeah. man. Well, I mean, I, I just wanted to talk about specifically cowardice and how it relates to Christianity in this specific situation. I mean, in Dante's sure. Inferno, you know, cowards would be... <laughs> cowards, panderers and seducers, flatterers, sorcerers and false prophets, liars, thieves and Ulysses and Diomedes would be found in the eighth circle of hell. That is the lowest circle of hell. Be, you know, that's the lowest circle of hell with exception to betrayers. Yeah. So, I mean, that, that, that is how serious cowardice is. If you know uh, that, that, that this is happening and you don't do anything about it at all, it's extremely serious. It's an yeah. extremely serious offense against you. You know, I, I didn't think about that, Joseph. That that a lot of these people are actually cowards. They're 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 putting us up on such a high level. You got to show me the receipts. The guy just said, or whatever. They're putting us on this ridiculous level, and then asking nothing of him in return. That's right. That's and right. Calling, and that's that. They're cowards. In the detractors, in the in some of the detractors' defense, a lot of them have actually asked for say Jesse has to respond. Jesse has to does this, that, and the other. And and I actually appreciate some of that nuance from from a couple people. Okay. But right. but but there are others that aren't. I mean, I don't I, I don't know that Sticks has said anything about it. For example, I don't. He doesn't I, care. No, it, it, he's it, totally. Uh, it just off seems the like running cover. It. Like I, I said, the yeah. people that are running cover. I mean, it's a serious sin. And once again, he's a Satan worshiper. So I know he doesn't care about the seven circles of hell because I think he's going for number nine, according to his religion. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> let me ask Patrick, uh, let me ask Patrick a question. This is a very simple question. You know, feel free to answer it or whatever you want. Would you and are you willing to provide an affidavit and swear under oath to in writing to the testimony you provided on video to church militant? Are you prepared? Are you willing to give a testimony under oath and meaning legally binding that the things you stated are true? Absolutely. Yes. There you go, people. That that's a big deal. Uh, that that's a lot of people don't understand what these terms mean. They they hear you know they they're accusing me of slandering Jesse and defamation. They don't understand what these terms mean. They don't understand the requirements per state, and you know, all this other stuff. Federal court, state court, like what you just said is a big deal. And if you do provide an affidavit and you get it notarized and you sign it, that's a sworn testimony. That means you're swearing under penalty of perjury, felony perjury, that it's true and this happened, that you had a 10-year sexual relationship with Reverend Jesse Lee Peterson. And the same is true for the other victims if they go through with the testimony like that as well and they sign it and get it notarized or literally go into a courtroom with the Bible or whatever. That's another form of testimony under oath, but it's it's the same thing and you're liable for felony perjury and going to, for, to go into prison for five years if you lie. They don't understand this. And these people, they lob words around defamation, slander, blah, blah, blah. I haven't seen any attorneys come out yet and say this stuff's not credible, right? I haven't seen any attorneys claim defamation. If anybody lied, you would, could be liable for defamation, certainly. And if you had no, no reasonable basis to believe something, you could be liable for defamation. I have a very reasonable basis to believe that you guys are telling the truth here. And the fact that you're willing to go forward and provide a sworn statement is a huge deal. And that is evidence. Testimony is evidence, particularly when you give it under oath and you could go to jail for lying. This is not funny. Like, well, I'm 100 percent. If that's what it takes, I would do that. Absolutely. Yes. 
Yeah, a woman, I mean, a woman. And, and, and just and just and just on the on the question of church militants track record, I sent you a link, Anthony, if you want to open it up and show everybody it's in the chat. Oh, yeah. Right now. Um, Let me, uh, I, I just want them to see this and, and, and just and just kind of go through some of the things that you have here. I mean, this is just a list of all the special investigations we've done. You know, um, uh, right here you have uh, the spotlight, truth teller, sociopath, part two, where it talks about Bishop Richard Stick of Knoxville covering up sex abuse. No one else is doing this sort of investigative work right now. We look out for predator priests, predator bishops, cover up financial scandal, physical abuse, all sorts of other abuses going on in the Catholic Church. This, all of these reports are at risk. All of these reports are at risk if we released a non-credible and false and false um yeah and false report on Jesse Lee Peterson. Why I noticed, would we do um, that? What's the I noticed point? Joe I noticed Joe that the church militant there's an attorney that works for you guys that follows me on Twitter now. Is he full time or is he on retainer for church militant? Can you disclose what the basic relationship is? I don't know the I don't know our lawyer relationships well enough to speak on that. Okay. Just to asking. Be That's not that my department is not that, but we we sure. have we 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 are we. I mean, like I said, if if he thinks that we if he thinks that we defamed him and and, and wants to sue us or something, I guess he can sure. sue us if he wants to. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, that's what people don't understand and, and why this is the reason I'm challenging Jesse. I'm willing to put my balls on the line financially and reputationally and in court and legally. I'm not playing. I'm already engaged in two other lawsuits right now, civil lawsuits. Uh, we filed both of them. And if we have to file a third, I will. And if Jesse wants to file one against me, go for it. I've openly dared him and challenged him in public to do it. People think this is a think this is a bluff or something. I'm not playing. Like lawyer up and sue me. I will take you to court. We're going to go to discovery and we're going to look into your phone records. We're going to get affidavits. We're going to deposition Ermius and other people, employees at Bond. When you get deposition, that's like giving a testimony under oath. You can't lie. You can plead the fifth, whatever, but you can't lie. If you lie, you go to jail. If you're not Hillary Clinton or something, right? If you're not a powerful person, you go to jail. So right. these people are these people have nothing on the line. Let me say this too: Jesse was a big speaker at my event, and they invited me. I have the email; I can pull it up if people want to see it. It's very simple. They invited me again. They requested from my company, Twenty One Studios, to film Bond 2022 conference in Orlando again. I declined, unrelated to this, several months ago. I just didn't want to do it. Right? I had a lot of money there. I could have made. Jesse speaking at my event brings ticket sales. We're talking thousands and thousands of dollars. I have put my relationships with my other speakers and business partners at risk by publishing this documentary, by making these memes, by having the conviction and the courage to take a stance on this and be certain about it and come to a conclusion and take moral responsibility for that and legal at this point. I've made that very clear. I'm challenging Jesse to sue me and bond. These people don't get that. I have put tens of thousands of dollars, if not more, at risk by taking this position. These internet, you know, it sticks and hammer at least has got his face on it, but being a stupid uh, scumbag in this case with this stuff, right? But these other people have cartoon character faces. They're anonymous idiots on Twitter and YouTube. They don't have anything on the line. They're just mouthing off like little kids because they're mad that their daddy, their digital father figure is a fraud and a predator and a homo. And it's, it's I get that it's disgruntling to them, but they need to get through that and be men and be mature about it. You can be in denial, you move to anger, you move to acceptance and all this stuff. Like there's a there's a grieving process for this. Like when someone dies, this is this in a way, he the conceptual figure of Jesse has died in their head or is beginning to die. That's part of why I put the memes out to make it funny. And I think it helps kind of smooth out the process for these people. It makes them angry and triggers them, but it triggers them into an emotional process of accepting what their mind is telling them is logically true. That these people are not playing. These allegations are serious. You guys will want to testify under oath. This is not funny. This guy has been a 30 year fraud. It's a big deal. People got preyed on. And, and, and to all the young people out there, you know, watching this right now, I, I just want to let you know, I get it. You're in shock. You're in shock right now. Somebody that you liked, somebody that, that 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 you would go to for all this advice, this moral advice, this spiritual advice, all this stuff to help you. I understand what it feels like to lose that. My spiritual director died back in January, and that was a rough time for me. It was very upsetting. And you losing your spiritual director, not to death, but to something heinous like this, to where there's this 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 natural just 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 severing of the relationship while he's still here 
just destroying his credibility with you. It's going to be painful. You're yep. going to hurt. But defending him is not going to make you feel better. It's just going to make you regret it in the future when the truth finally comes out in its fullness. Yeah. And, and you know what? These people don't really even know Jesse. They know a persona that they hear on the radio or yep. on the Internet or whatever. They don't really know who he is. And quite frankly, I didn't know who he was. I mean, I was thought we were friends for, for decades. And when I look back now, I wonder if the whole thing was not just a fraud and a scam. You guys have already come to that on the outside, but I'm on the inside yeah. here being somebody who's had a very, we, you know, we were very close for a long time. And I think there's a side to this guy. I mean, I know there's a side to this guy now that I just yeah. wasn't aware of and that yep. it shocks me even to this day, to be honest with you. Yeah. And that's totally fair, man. I, as bombastic as I am with the memes and my statements and stuff, especially in writing on Twitter and my blog and my newsletter, uh, you have a much longer and richer experience with Jesse that makes this a lot more complex for you, uh, psychologically, emotionally, spiritually, whatever. And that's totally fair. And these people being in shock is to some degree fair, and I'm not surprised. I've been through this several times. With that Jack Murphy character I mentioned, it was the same thing. And that was huge. That was the biggest one before this. Jesse has at least twice the size of the audience of Jack Murphy, who also had a big following. 150,000 followers on just Twitter, for example. Yeah, wow. And I, I've dealt with this in the Manosphere, smaller frauds, guys with 100,000 YouTube subscribers, guys with 150. Jack Murphy had about maybe 250,000 fans total. When you expose someone that these young men, in some cases women as well, but young men mostly, they really look up to him as a father figure and they have father hunger. They're raised by single mothers. They're in yeah. a culture that hates masculinity. They're looking for anyone to speak out against feminism and you know radical leftism and BLM and Antifa and all this crap. It is really shocking and disturbing for them. And a lot of them just don't have the maturity to handle it. So they go into shock. Some yes. of them lash out, they fight, they freeze, they fawn. They suck up to Jesse now. They're going to defend him. He's their daddy. There is no father. You don't need a father if you have the father, whatever Jesse says. They're, they're, they're on auto, like little robots. They're the ones who are more into the cult, the more deeper layers of the cult. Yeah. They're just re regurgitating lines at this point at Jesse because they're, they're totally, their identity is so wrapped up in Jesse Lee Peterson and Bond and his like warped fake Christianity. They don't even know how to get out of it. They're totally sucked in. They're you know, in a cult. Right. And that's, and that's, and that's, that's kind of the point is that, you know, people need to realize, I know there's a lot of Christians watching right now. I know there's yeah. a lot, there's a lot of, you know, believers out there right now. You need to ask yourself, is God's greatest gift to you? Not your human reason. That was, it's a gift to you from God. Use it. Use those critical thinking skills that you have. Watch the documentary with a, with, 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 you can watch it with a critical mind, even if you want to. And then yeah. just listen to this, put all the pieces together. All these people coming out here talking about being masculine and being alpha males and doing, you know, all this stuff, flexing, you know, flexing their muscles on camera, showing, showing that they're chads on stuff on the internet. If you're yeah. a true chad, then why don't you go and look at the documentary, use your critical thinking skills like we have during this entire interview and come to the proper conclusion. I don't, I don't know yeah. what to tell people. And, and that's, and that's what I'm, and that's, that's what upsets me about this. You know, this is not the behavior of alpha males to go out and just blindly defend somebody on some faux sense of loyalty that doesn't yeah. exist. That the is not males. what men do. Men follow. Male. Yeah, exactly. Men follow the evidence. Men Amen. can take the evidence and see that the puzzle pieces fit together or don't fit, fit together. You have critical thinking skills. It's your duty to be logical. You're acting, you're acting like not even you're not even acting like a woman when you do that. You're acting like a little girl when you do that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So Amen. that's Amen. the point that I'm making. Stop acting like children and trying to defend the guy that you like because you're in shock. That is an emotional response. And start using your human reason. It's a gift from God. For goodness sakes, use it. You know, I agree hundred percent. By the way, you just flashed something from Fabian there. Fabian was on the video. Fabian Essential was on the video too. He has oh. a, lo a long he history that we, with Jesse and Jesse lying about him. I helped Jesse, unfortunately, do that. Uh, took Je took Fabian to court because Fabian was saying, uh, I don't want to get into the whole story, but he let uh, Fabian go and because Fabian was 
saying some things about his show that he was trying to help make the show better, but Jesse got mad, didn't want Fabian to talk to him. Fabian wanted to keep talking with Jesse and have a conversation. And basically Jesse just took him to court at the same way he took Martin to court and just did, wanted them out of his hair. So Fabian has been onto this for a long time. And apparently Fabian just said that Jesse asked him if he was a homosexual in 1996, I think, or whatever the, whatever the year was. Yep. Um, and it just shows you, yeah, 1996. So he did this, Jesse did the same thing with me when he first met me. So there's a pattern to the way that people that are doing wrong operate. Joseph, you know that. You've seen it over and over. You saw it in our interviews. You saw it in your past work. The land You've minister. seen that, uh, Anthony, in your life. There is a pattern. Um, evil uses a pattern. What works, they continue to work and do the same pattern over and over. Jesse's pattern in the future is going to be to continue to uh, push this thing away or attack people. Uh, unless God hits him between the eyes with a lightning bolt, I don't think there'll be any change in his behavior. This is why I, I petition. Oh, can I, I just? Uh, this is why I petition every single person here to spiritually arm yourselves. You know, pray your pray, pray your rosary, pray all these other things. The thing that people don't understand is that these devils, these people that that, that these things that manipulate your souls, tempt you, and do all these other things, try to get you to do the things that are wrong. All of these things are by their very by their very species and existence a a infinitely more knowledgeable being than you are. They yes. are more powerful than you. Yes. They are fallen angels. You are not an angel. You are a human being. And if you think that you're going to, you know, you have your devil comes down to Georgia moment and triumph over the devil because you can play the fiddle really well, <laughs> it ain't going to happen. It ain't going to, it's not going to happen. And more importantly, on that note, the only person that can fend off the demons is God. You need to put on the armor of God, raise your rosaries high, say your prayers, and make sure that God is protecting you from these sorts of things. And especially if you're coming to conclusions that are preventing you from critically thinking and using God's gift of, of reason. Jesus is the logos in Catholicism, for goodness gracious. Yeah. Use it. Joseph, I want to, um, I so want to well address said, by the way. Yeah. I want to address the super chat. So I appreciate the $10 donation to my channel. But I do want to kind of dig into this guy because this is highlighting a big uh, cognitive issue they're having. Or, or basically, there's hyper skeptical. David says, guys, please have at it on camera tape. It helps because it sounds me too ish. So in the manosphere, we have a saying that we've had since about 2019 when the, the kind of fraud battle really went public instead of kind of behind the scenes, people trying to fight. And we call it the red pill blind spot. The Red Man Group comes from wanting to be a red pill man, trying to understand the truth about the world, but particularly about uh, your own nature as a man and the nature of women. And living in a feminist culture, the truth about women today is not uh, allowed. Movies are all feminist. The books are all feminist. TV is all feminist. The church has been invaded by feminism, pretty much all of them. It's all around you all the time, all your governments. The military is invaded by feminism, et cetera, et cetera. But this, in the manosphere, we call a red pill blind spot, and it's what the frauds abuse. A red pill blind spot is what I alluded to earlier, where a manosphere content creator, kind of like Jesse, but also Jack Murphy and many others, they rail against feminism and you know maybe Antifa and BLM, lesbians and all the stuff Jesse says, right? Big fat lesbians, right? Lesbians. And this is lesbians, but it's genuinely funny, and that's part of how Jesse manipulates these people. Yes. I'm using the memes, which are funny for the for what I believe is a true and forceful and, and good, noble cause, virtuous. Jesse is using humor and laughter to manipulate people while also railing against things that genuinely are evil and toxic and yeah. hurtful to family and to men and to women. You know, common sense masculinity, we can call it biblical masculinity, biblical femininity. He rails on these things and it puts up these people in a blind spot. So now they say that uh, it's Me Too-ish. No, it's not. This is serious. These are corroborating witnesses to eyewitness testimony firsthand that spans decades. This isn't, and also it's not plausible. Jesse P Peterson is not Larry Elder. He's not Donald Trump. He's not Gavin Newsom. He's not Ron DeSantis. He's not Johnny Depp, whatever. This guy is a public figure, but he's not major and he's not running for office. There's no plausible explanation that a major Democrat donor or feminist billionaire, or, you know, Bill Gates or something is just dropping cash off at these people and organizations to do this. 
these allegations against the witnesses and against church militant are delusional. They're from people who are hoodwinked or stupid or ignorant or just too cowardly to face the basic truth that these allegations are serious, highly credible, and true. You guys are not playing. Church militant is not playing. The memes are funny. The truth is not. Like, this is not funny. And and if you just want a, a blood sample and a semen sample and, you know, uh, the NSA to dump phone records out of, like, government data banks in Utah, these people are idiots. Like, get out of here. I think I mean, thank you for your money, but you know, go screw yourself. I mean, no, well, I'm gonna, I, I want to I want to address that. Can you put that comment up there again, so, yeah, so no, everybody no can see it while I address no it? Have it on camera or on tape. How am I supposed to do that? What do you want me to do? You want me to you want me to organize some sort of you know ten thousands of dollars sting operation or something like that? Yeah. Th these sorts of people are prepared for these scenarios. They prepare for these things. They make sure they only do it with people that are close to them, specifically yeah. people inside of Bond. Do you think that how how long did, how long did you know Jesse before you before he made any advances on you, Patrick? How uh, what? Well, again, I told talked about in the video where he'd be playing around, and I could see some of that grooming behavior. And I'm not talking about grooming behavior. Oh, okay. When did he make? When did he? How long did it take for him to make a move on you? Well, I mean, I've known Jesse since like. 1990 1992 at the latest and he didn't make a move on me into that virginia hotel room in 2005 right, right in there so that's a so, lot so, so as a reporter so as a reporter this fool expects me to do a a, a, a t wait 10 years for him to get close enough to somebody to try to do something now in the case okay. of samuel it was one year well i know that this is going on yeah it's, yep. it's not you again. really think that that's the moral solution to this problem first off first let me off, put in an important they're not, thinking, an important they're not thinking straight joseph they're not but also you did get this let me, let me just kind of play with this guy this commenter david you did get this on tape and on camera you got eyewitness testimony firsthand yep. in very calm settings that are very serious they weren't outlandish they weren't dramatic they weren't you know hollywood level stuff happening mundane stuff and people went on camera with their face you could have done witnesses that didn't want to be um identified they could have blacked out in a silhouette and and hide hidden their identity for example modified their voice and this happens with other documentaries right but it typically involve even more serious allegations government abuse uh major criminal conspiracies murder and stuff like that right people are scared you didn't these guys were willing to not only testify to the truth of their experience in their life with jesse and what they witnessed and what happened to them they went with their identity, with their full legal name, under full liability of defamation, civil suits, all kinds of stuff. This is not, this is serious. And you did get that on tape. You didn't get this even, you know, some anonymous letter, some anonymous audio. You couldn't make it out who it was. These guys went on video. They went, they were very clear. They gave their full identity, their full name, everything. That's a big deal. And then downplaying that is stupid and irrational. And to call it Me Too-ish is, is, is even more ridiculous. The whole point of Me Too is that non-credible witnesses were making testimonies against people that they either barely knew or knew Never very, 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 very well. So even, even, from, yeah. even from the man's standpoint, it's not the fact that it's only victims that we should be against. We, we shouldn't just discount anything that, it, that that doesn't have a porno to go with it or, or anything along those lines. What it needs to, what it needs to be is what is the credibility of the witnesses that are giving their testimony. That's what matters. And this is very important because this is a very consistent problem in the Catholic Church right now. This is a very specific problem, and we all cannot stand it. Witnesses come forward, and they're not believed because they don't have a blood sample. You need, you need to have all this, this giant burden of proof for them to even start investigating it. I'm not talking about the FBI. I'm talking about the Catholic hierarchy in the Catholic Church. Theodore McCarrick was a disgraced cardinal in the Catholic Church that raped people that molested that molested underage people that, that that had a summer home where he would sexually assault seminarians for like four decades i don't i, I don't don't quote me on the time something like that four decades and you're telling me that we shouldn't have listened to those victims and we should have just let it go on because we didn't have a semen sample or a porno video yeah, yeah. is exactly. that what you need so that's what we should do that's what we have to do with this sort of thing that burden of proof is unreasonable and yes. what we have is evidence from credible witnesses and credible yeah. victims. Yeah. That's and, good and, enough. 
And one of these people and hard evidence, by the way. Yeah. And and one of these people is doing a live stream with you right now. You can look at me. Okay, I'm here. I I don't see Jesse doing any live streams defending himself. Uh, Let me actually let's back up to a live stream about this. Right. The one let's play it again real quick. The little clip of Jesse, the only public response he's given to this at all so far. Here we go. Michelle is a first time caller out of Detroit. Michelle, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Hi, how are you today? All this well, Michelle. Thanks for calling. I, I had a question. I'm just kind of confused. Um, why haven't uh, you addressed the issue of uh, the gay documentary? Um, it's not concerning to me. She said she was a liberal. She was having doubts. She lied. What a wicked woman. Tony is. Now, we had Joe's response earlier. Do you want to respond to that, Patrick? Because yeah, I want to I mean, go into it as well. I didn't really have one until now. An interesting comment he made. It's not concerning to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, I find that kind of interesting. Because taken mm-hmm. on his face, it's like, I don't care. Um, one thing I found out about Jesse over the years, and, and I was shocked to learn this at first, but it all kind of made sense later, is he doesn't, uh, he kind of has a weird personality in that he doesn't care about other people. He, I, I've seen numerous instances of it. It's kind of, kind of narcissistic that you talk about a narcissist. Everything's mm-hmm. about them. Yes. But he, he actually isn't concerning to him because he really doesn't care. And the there is no past. It's only what's happening right now. It doesn't matter what he what he's done, how he's messed up people's lives. He just kind of moves right on and keeps doing his thing. And it it, it doesn't concern him. And people kind of mistake that and think, wow, this guy's really cool. He's like Dirty Harry in... Uh, you know, eating a ham sandwich while he blows away the bad guy. Isn't that cool? It's not cool when you don't care in that way. It shows a lack of concern for other human beings. Yep. I want to follow up on this and give my own little breakdown of it. So you you made an important point here too, though, that it's about him. And I don't know if you dug into this quite enough. It's not concerning to me, he said. Well, it's not really, a, it is about, the documentary is about Jesse, but I'm not here to hear, I don't want your feelings. I wanted, it, she wanted basically a statement on this, mm-hmm. right? Duh, like anyone, like a lot of people do right now. Right. Thousands of, tens of thousands of people want an answer right now, right? Jesse needs to respond to this. He needs to respond to this. Anything, even a one paragraph statement from Jesse Lee Peterson, founder of Bond. I deny these allegations. I don't know why these men did this. If they have a problem, they can lawyer up. And if they continue speaking, I may hire an attorney for a civil suit or something, right? Have a great day. I'll see you on my show. Thanks for watching. He hasn't done anything like that. And he made it basically emotional there. It's not concerning to me. I didn't ask you if it was concerning to you. I wanted to know what you think about this documentary that alleges you're a complete fraud and a homo predator. This is important and serious. Now, on top of that, on top of that, uh, he doesn't, if in uh, someone else taught me this a while ago, ironically, my ex-wife, the psychopath hooker, uh, it's something I never forgot because it's, I found it to be very, very true. Right. She once said to, I've never heard anyone else say this either. It was really interesting. And it was that when someone uses the word not, they're basic, they're usually lying. Mm-hmm. They're trying to negate the truth. Uh, I not rather than an affirmative, for example, this is why Donald Trump, when he argues with people, he doesn't say, uh, you are not right. He says you're wrong. Mm. wrong is an affirmative and it's different from using the word not. And allegedly the reason the theory is people ignore the word not and they don't see the truth. So anyway, I think he's using uh, it's not concerning to me. No, the truth is removing the word not and replaying the, the sentence. What that means to Jesse is it is concerning to me. That's why he blocked me on Twitter. That's why he's deleting. He deleted that video. I just showed you it no longer exists on his channel. They're locking down all their chats members only subscribers only they're doing stonewalling business partners like me that worked with them stonewall no response no response no response block 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 because he's guilty not concerning to him it is very concerning to him well, jesse it, is terrified right now it's, it's concerning to him in a legal way but i mean in a moral way it's not concerning to him. there could be truth to that if he's a sociopath for sure yeah. there, could, um, there could be some mixed um, projection going on there yeah, I, I noticed you have uh, somebody named Swiss Ketchup keeps saying... Hang on, hang on, hang on. I have one more comment I want to jump on, yeah, on my ahead. own analysis. The last comment I have in that little video you saw, what did he do with the caller? Uh, she lied. What a wicked woman. Right. So we had three things happen there. Number one is his answer was a deflection. He didn't say the documentary is false. I didn't do it. Thanks for calling. Bye. 
right? He didn't deny the allegations given the opportunity on video. He then deleted it and covered it up, right? Light his own little mm -hmm. comment here. So his answer was a deflection of answering it in general. It's a deflection. He didn't say, oh, it's false, bye. It was a deflection. He didn't, because he's not legally liable for saying, his opinion is it's not concerning to me. Right. It doesn't mean anything. If he right. starts accusing you people of lying, he gets an additional legal trouble. He might understand that. Yeah. I understand that just as a business part, uh, owner, all right? That's my understanding of the law to be, to be sincere on there, given my own knowledge of it as an amateur. I'm not an attorney, right? But that's my understanding of it. The minute he starts denying his allegations of factual events that are true, he could get in deep shit and more, he digs himself deeper. So deflection, and then what did he immediately do? He hung up on her and dug in her credibility. She lied. Well, big whoop, she lied. You're accused of being a home predator. She lied to get on your show because you're blocking people with a filter of producers that I verified now from getting on the show asking about it. So deflection immediately went after her credibility, ad hom attack, and then he doubled down, doubled down on the credibility. What a wicked woman combined with humor. This is a master manipulator at work, and the average person does not understand this. Yes. This man is a practice con artist and a predator and a psychopath. Absolutely. And until uh, I heard you, Anthony, talk about things, and, and, and Joseph too, you guys understand this because you've looked at it. The average person cannot wrap their head around the degree of evil that exists within Jesse Lee Peterson. Yeah, they just can't. Evil. And, and just to answer one thing, this Swiss ketchup person keeps saying that I'm to blame and so forth. Hey, I've said on this show, I've said it on my blogs, I've said it everywhere. I am to blame for my part of this. I've never skirted that issue. Uh, so everything I've done with him, I have myself to blame. But that doesn't mean this guy didn't play me in a very wicked way. And that's what we're exposing right now. Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate that there. Uh, I do hold Jesse accountable 100% uh, being a predator and preying on men and grooming men. But also, but it, it's a strange situation because it's not just happening in general. This is happening to men who were wounded, who were abused, who were yeah. on drugs. Very specific. But there is, on a, on a factual basis, though, most psychologists would say that to every relationship, it's two-sided. So there is some level of responsibility for this Absolutely. happening, but but it's made more complicated because you guys are abuse victims and stuff. You're not just average people off the street. He met at a gay club. Yeah, uh, he, he was setting up a he was setting up a context for this to happen over a long period of time and repeatedly with multiple people. Well, that's that's what you would say grooming is, right? You're yeah. As Martin said on the video, Martin's not gay, so he tested him and went as far as he could. He yes. found out he couldn't go any further. He stopped. There's yeah. other people along the way that Jesse never touched because I guarantee you that Jesse, on one form or another, did test everybody that got into his universe. Yes, yes, guys. I got to use the bathroom real quick. Um, if you guys want to kind of go through the comments or chat about the issues, I need to. I got to use the bathroom. We'll be right back. Oh, not, not I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to get out soon. By the way, myself. Anthony, did you want me to hang out a little bit longer? Or you yeah, just for out? a minute, just for a minute or two. I just got to use the bathroom. We are back. Yeah, now Patrick, you want to take any comments or? Well, yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm just, I can look through the comments right now. You know, um, let's see. His supporters are basically saying it's not true. This is from Conservo Virtus. His supporters are basically saying it's not true because he was smart enough to never live stream himself sitting on a you know what, which almost every human but Jack Murphy is smart enough <laughs> to do. <Right. laughs> yeah, I think that's pretty. I, I think that's pretty funny. Yeah, but, everybody's um, smart enough to do that to not get into that kind of trouble. But the understand you understand have to understand about Jesse. Jesse claims to be a Southern boy. Uh, he says he's dumb, a dumb guy in private. Jesse told me one time, uh, I may have to repeat this when, when uh, Anthony comes back. Jesse told me one time that he was a genius. And I, I remember sitting up in his office and him telling me, uh, I'm a genius. And it's very interesting because his persona is, I'm a dummy, but God working through me is what works, blah, blah, blah. Um, but, but he knows that there is something working in him that I would call the devil. I think, Joseph, you would call the devil. There is there is an intelligence that is working even in his answer. It's certainly to this, demonic. Yeah, even to this, even his answer to this woman, uh, and what he said to her that called in was so quick, and it was filled with all sorts of jumping around and basically lying, that you have to have evil operating through you in order to be that slick. 
Yeah. And then one of the other things that, you know, I'm still seeing, I'm still seeing this stupid, this stupid comment rolling through. Somebody asked, who, who, who was it? Uh, oh, I just lost, I just lost it on there. Let's see. Somebody at, oh, right here. Matt Reeves says, where is the evidence? I'll tell you again, go watch the documentary. Matt Reeves, uh, if you've been here watching for more than five minutes, we've discussed this over and over. So either you're dense, you're lying, or or something here because you're not on the level here. If you keep asking for evidence after we've been talking about this for hours, what? how far in are we? We're two and a half hours into the stream right now, right? Yep. And another comment right here, Oedipus, Oedipus text. Text, Oedipus text, where's the proof? Once again, what's your bur what's your burden of proof? Do you, do you do you that's my point. You need you need you need the absolute bulletproof 100% this that or the other. It doesn't matter that things are things are likely, it doesn't matter that things are true, it doesn't matter that allegations were made. Nothing should ever be said about anything even if it's ongoing and could hurt other people unless you have that exact piece of smoking gun evidence right there that you can use, even though this is all stuff that is purposely kept secret in order to protect somebody's reputation and there isn't access to. Right, right. That's what you want to do. That's your expectation. That is completely insane. And like I said, you can choose not to believe it for a stupid reason if you like. I can't put Jesse in jail. I'm not trying to put Jesse in jail. I've never done any of those things. I've never made any efforts to do that. I brought to light the witness testimonies. Church Militant brought forward the witness testimonies. I'm just saying, it's just, these are the sorts of things that allow people like Jesse to continue harming people for years and years and years on end. You yeah, can't and, just let this stuff sit. And, 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 uh, 100%. And interestingly enough, when you watch people who are pro-Jesse, they have kind of a commonality too. In other words, it's interesting that Jesse preaches all this love, but he doesn't show love. And the people who are on his team who are, who are standing up for him now, anytime I've seen them in comments, they're off, often very rude. They mm -hmm. are. They make insulting comments. Um, they are not honest. They have all the qualities that Jesse has, but they use all the Jesse meme language, right? With the laughing emojis, all the stuff that they throw out there. You're a beta. And it's like, wow, it's like they've got Jesse's words down and his spirit. Yep, yep. It's like they're it's like they're carbon copies of Jesse. Anthony, can you put up a comment real quick? Can the, yeah. From Oedipus text. Text. Oedipus text. This one says that we need. Let's see if that's it. Yeah. We need voicemail, texts, screenshots, photos, something, anything to show proof. What's crazy about that? We have two pieces <clears throat> of hard evidence in there, buddy. He yep. liked gay pornography on Twitter. And then shut yep. down his account and then hung up on somebody for asking about it. Yep. I'm going to pull it up um, in a moment. Here it is. I'll pull it up again. Not everyone's um, watched the whole show. This will make it a little easier for them. Yeah. So this is a fact, and it was a big deal on Twitter and on YouTube about a year or two ago when it happened. It's not in dispute. This is real. And his, his someone, Jesse, or someone with access to his account from Bond, liked this tweet that's extremely gay. Pornography. I mean, there's no other way to put it. I don't know if it gets any so than that. that happened. And why did that happen? Why was someone on Jesse's account liking, looking at, and then liking gay porn posts? I don't think someone, had, I don't think some Twitter employee hacked into his account oh, you, and was you know, doing it. Once, you know? once again, I mean, I'd like, I, I can pull, <laughs> I can pull up the message again. So the photo that we have of him being, being hugged is doctored. The guy in it, the guy in it, is lying the four other people are lying and the tweet was most likely by someone else who runs his twitter and it was set to private for no reason at all yeah it's i've seen those comments they're insanely stupid there's no evidence that anyone was controlling that account other than jesse lee peterson when that tw that tweet was like where's your critical thinking and they'll say well he's just a dumb boomer and does this it goes back to what we had already said before now the you know, let me many, guys can i break in for a second there's many uh, things along the way that you could put together and i put it together a lot of them after the fact um, but there was a scene shortly after my article started coming out. I don't know if you guys are aware of this, but Jesse fainted on his radio show. Okay. I, I remember. Yeah. He had a blackout on his radio show. Never happened before ever 
I've been, been around Jesse a long time. He's never had a blackout that I'm aware of on his radio show. He blacked out uh, during the middle of a caller and was out, and they had to him off the air. There's a video on it. I saw a video. It's probably still out there somewhere on YouTube. So a lot of things have happened, and that was my way of kind of looking at it and having like a little, I guess, God moment where I just said, uh, I think that he was worried at that point, and he freaked out. And I think that something happened there. It never was explained, by the way. And they all covered for him afterwards and said he was fine and all that. He wasn't fine. Um, keep putting up. Can you keep putting up Oedipus's comments? Because now you're seeing what's you're seeing this happen in real time. Him spiraling into ridiculousness. It's yeah. getting worse. Everyone knows Jesse doesn't handle his own. Do we? What really? Really? Who makes the, who makes that claim? Right. Who, yeah. who, who, who exactly makes that claim? I'd, I'd, I'd like for him to answer well, that question. Well, Keep let me, bringing let me it up back. and you'll watch it spiral. It'll continue let, to spiral. It'll continue to let's, get worse with his objections. Let's clarify, too, in the clip you showed in the documentary, Amazing Disgrace, when Jesse answered uh, a question about this tweet that we're looking at here, being liking a gay porn post, Jesse also did the same thing we showed earlier in regards to the documentary itself. He didn't outright deny it. He went into deflection. He didn't say, I didn't like that tweet. I didn't do it. It's false. He said, I don't know. Who knows who handles my Twitter account? I'm just old and black or whatever he said, right? He, he said, went into yeah, he said, do you really think I run my own Twitter? That's what he said. He didn't it's, say he did. He never said he didn't. Right. That's right. That's right. And he does this every, it's his main, yes. it's one of his main um, methods for dealing when he gets confronted with the truth as he snakes out through deflection. He, he answers with their question. I didn't yes. ask you to, to ask me a question. I asked you a question. Did you like from your account, Jesse Lee Peterson, right. this gay porn post? If not, which employee at Bond did this? Did Ermius do it? Did Nick Gonzalez do it? Did Haig do it? Who did it? I want to know. Because someone who works with you liked the gay porn post or you, Jesse, liked the gay porn post. Yeah. Those are the only plausible explanations. I don't believe anyone at Twitter or the CIA hacked into your account. You yeah. or someone you work with at Bond liked that post right so, here. Yeah. You liked it. If, if you know Jesse at all and you've seen his show, if you see Fallen State, you see his anything that you've seen. You see his Sunday uh, church. Jesse controls with questions. That's his yes. method of control. Uh, everyone has their own method of control, especially evil people. If you watch him, he controls the person with questions. He either he either deflects away or he attacks them and backs them off and tries to make them feel stupid or uses humor to do so. If, if you start watching that, you'll see the same thing happen over and over and over again. Can we put up his next his next response? I'd like he's he's continuing a spiral. Oh, at a um, yeah. where is it? I want to uh, keep I want to keep this going because if we can actually confront a dissenter and keep it going, we can see how absurd this whole thing is. He says it. He says it on. I'm guessing is what he meant to say on his show multiple times. He also doesn't handle his Instagram. This is common knowledge. According to who? According yeah. to who? Who is this common knowledge according to? According to you? Should we just take well, your word for it? They're, they're, More they're, importantly, do, Patrick, Patrick, I mean, I don't know if you would know this. Do you know that he ran his, that he would play on Twitter? No, 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 but these same people who are asking us for this high degree of evidence are taking his word that he doesn't control his own account. It, yeah, it, it's it's just, point, guys. <laughs> I, yeah, I welcome anybody. I welcome any any dissenter to comment right now in yeah. that comment section. Put up your best argument about how he's in how he's innocent, and we'll put it up on the show, and we'll both address it. I'm yeah. Fully I fully I demand to take criticism. I demand it. I demand a blood sample and video evidence that Jesse Lee Peterson does not control his Twitter account <laughs> because guess what? It's his Twitter account. It's not Bond. It's not Fallen State TV Twitter account. It's Jesse Lee Peterson verified Twitter account. If any other public figure with a verified Twitter account and 100,000 followers like him did that, they'd be under the same scrutiny of, it's your account, why did you like it? I don't care who you allege, allegedly, you're just not even answering the question. He didn't answer the question, right? It's not, you know, who answer, who, they didn't ask on the, the documentary, as I understand it, who manages your Twitter account, it's why did you like it? He then deflects, you think I really manage my own Twitter account? That is deflection. That is the hallmark of a liar and a manipulator and a fraud. They could politicians do this all the time. Sir, did you snort cocaine off that hooker's off those hookers' boobs? Do you think I go to strip clubs on Saturday night? Yeah. I didn't I didn't ask you about where you went. I just asked you a direct yes or no question and you answered me with a deflective question. That means you're a liar 99% of the time. It's called this a mental it's called life. a mental reservation. Those are called, yeah. this is a, it's a clinical, they're called mental reservations. It's where you, it's where you, you intend, it's where you intend to, 
to 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 withhold the truth from somebody without actually telling the lie. Yeah, I think I this want... guy's right. He said, "None of your business." To the question, "None of your business." Right. Oh, it is. Oh, it is my business when I want the truth. Robert well, Jesse... Sand... Robert Sander saying something here. He was one of the uh, witnesses too. By the way, yeah. I don't know if you knew that, uh, Anthony. Yeah. Oh, you had him up for a moment, Robert so Santner. That's a, yeah, Robert Santner. He was one of the um, people on the panel. I'm looking, I'm looking for the, the one with the horse. The one with the horse. The horse By guy. the way, that's a that's a beautiful horse, Robert. Beautiful yeah. horse. Um, I'm looking back. There's so many comments. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm sure I'll comment again. Robert is the name too. Yeah, oh, here Robert it is. Santner. There this it is. What's uh, what in the radio when he was being questioned about being gay on Twitter? It's none of your business. <laughs> <laughs> all right okay good oedipus responded again oedipus responded again here we go oedipus responded again uh the bottom recent uh well a little bit further up but not too far yes he's a cult leader and liar since he claimed he never sinned absolutely i mean I, yeah those are the sorts of things where I, I can tell you that by the way i want to say one little thing about a cult leader cult leader to me is somebody who is bringing you to them and not to the truth and Jesse claims to bring people to the truth, but if you really watch how he operates, he's bringing people to him. The organization never grew in, the, in a proper way. Other people really didn't grow up around him. Now he's got some young guys and he's trying to get to take over for him and all that. In the past, other people were not uh, raised up. People like Ermius uh, could have been a, a spokesman for Bond, but Jesse purposely kept him down, in my opinion, because yeah. Ermius, Ermius wasn't into his uh, advances. That's my opinion, but I believe it's probably true. But Jesse, yeah. grew, Jesse grew the organization to be all about him and not to grow yeah. other people up because the or organization never got big enough. We never had a serious footprint as far as having measurable um, things that we did that were very impressive in our in the in the uh, programs that we had or in the uh, what do you call it, services that we did. They should have been much more impressive. Uh, but they were not because most it, churches it, would have that. Most pastors would have a hierarchy of other elders in the church in case Jesse died or something, right? Can we keep that like, one up? Can we keep that yes. Really but Jesse quick? did not. But but Jesse did not keep a serious. Uh, it's not operated like a normal church. You don't have elders. Yeah. In the church. You didn't have all that uh, oversight that are happening in most churches. It's basically around one man, and he controlled pretty much everything. Who does it by saying, I'm not a leader. I'm not a leader. Don't follow me. That's how they operate. It's a pump fake like football, right? Yeah. If you're running on the field, you want to fake someone out. You fake left and then run right. This is what he does. I'm not a leader. I'm not a cult leader. Oh, no, right. he's a cult leader. Well, he, he, uh, that's he, how he hides. He says, I'm just like you. But meanwhile, he tells you that I'm sin free. And that's why the people are drawn to him to find out how he did it. How did he become sin, sin free? So they'll go around him and stay around him for years. To see how he did it, only to find out, as I have, that it was a, it was all a scam to begin with. Yeah, I mean, the first thing is is that we shouldn't we shouldn't ever take at face value somebody who says yeah, that I it's agree. Really ever. I it's agree. just a silly statement. Anybody, yeah. any 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 man who lacks the humility to admit that they are that, that they have faults is typically somebody that you don't want to follow. It's just yeah. just as a general rule of thumb for any men out there, some guy comes up and says, I don't sin, I'm the guy, I don't do this, that, and the other. No. You know, you could say, I'm chaste. You could say, I'm any of those things, if this is true of yourself. But to say that you don't sin is just completely ridiculous. Yep. No. And this guy here says that I knew him for decades. Why don't I just have one, at least one text that would suggest Jesse was gay? Well, again, this guy isn't putting out stuff like that. He purposely... Jesse is not a dummy, no matter what he tells you on his show. He's a very smart individual. He's not going to put yeah. out stuff that are going to make him look like a, a like a homosexual. Not to mention the relationship was an adulterous relationship. There's no right. there's no yeah, there's no yeah. there, there's no way that that was going to have a paper trail behind it because nobody wanted to get caught. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, I'm sure, I mean, I guess it's possible that there could be. But in this instance, it appears there wasn't. Yeah. I want to make it clear that I'm firmly a believer at this point that the whole act Jesse puts on, let's say specific here in context, oh, I'm old and black and slow. He black, I'm old. He, 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 never, never, ever, ever. Amazing. This is all a, an explicit fraud. It's explicitly intended to deceive people that he's not smart and he's not quick-witted and he's not whatever, right? Now, he'll go at people in these savage moments or whatever and mess with people. Yeah. But that's the real him actually coming out a little bit and weaponizing it. 
But all this old and slow and I don't manage my Twitter account. I'm just a feeble old man. No, you're a predator fraud and a psycho. That's these people don't want to believe it. That you you meet people all the time in public. You don't even know who've killed people, molested children. You have no idea. They seem completely normal to you. Yeah, and meanwhile, yeah. you have people who take it. They have like a narcissism to it, so they go in public and they build these giant cults and you know personality cults and the fraud and the predation. People can't. They just don't want to deal with it. Like immature. It's, it's brilliant the way it's uh, Jesse's done over there. This guy, some Oedipus text here says, as soon as a Black man tells the truth. Someone got to tear him down. Shaking oh, my head. Geez. I'm shaking my head at you, Oedipus Tex, because what does that have to do with being black? I mean, I know plenty of black people that I hold up as great role models. Jesse ain't one of them. Yeah. Yeah. And I also hear from Oedipus Tex. I mean, this is like the male equivalent of the Me Too movement. Believe the accusers with no questions asked. Where do you get the idea? This is once again, the, the, these statements. So statements like these, this is, this is, by the way, the zenith of Jesse defenders. This is exactly their, this is exact. this is them at their best. You're seeing right. them at their best right now. This is the best critiques that they can bring up is this is yeah. just me. This is the male equivalent of me too. You didn't ask any questions. These are all assumptions. I did ask questions. In fact, even when I was questioning the victims initially, I tried to fool them and make them think things that didn't happen, didn't happen. And they would reject those things. These are wow. how you go about questioning things. This is how you investigate when you're doing investigative pieces. You need to verify the credibility. So once you have the verified credible witnesses, now you have to say, I'm not credible. Church militants, not credible. Church militants putting its reputation on the line for absolutely no reason whatsoever to prevent other victims from being, you know, uh, sexually abused in any way in the on the Catholic side of things, all just for absolutely no reason, just because we wanted to bust Jesse Lee Peterson. We were a conservative organization. We could have gotten tens of thousands of more views by continuing to have him on and debate Michael Voris on, on, on theology. We could have had a hundred more of those videos. They were extremely popular. I think it's got like over, it's got almost 30,000 views on YouTube right now, that debate. So tell me, what's the incentive? Why would we do that? We're a conservative organization too. We have conservative values. We're Catholic. We follow the faith. We don't agree with gay marriage. We don't agree with abortion. We don't agree with with with, with these things. We 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 supported Donald Trump. I mean, good grief. Yeah, yeah. I mean, anyway, you'd have you'd have to just not want to believe the truth. I mean, again, I understand their state of mind, but that's the state of mind they're in. It's not rational in any. It's form. a let's right. put it in context in a manosphere context. This is a huge red pill for a lot of guys to swallow. They they were basically sucked into a blue pill cult. Where they were lie the blue pill is a lie. It means the reality you live in is a lie and it's fake and it's fraudulent. They were sucked into a big blue pill in manosphere terms for many years in some cases. Our own fans on my channel for a couple of years, other people in the manosphere and in conservative circles and MAGA and America First for more years than that. People who knew him before that and Christians and stuff. They were they don't want to take most people don't want the truth. They want the illusion of truth. And that's what right. Jesse presents. That's what Jesse presents to them. Yeah. And they would they want to stay in this comfortable lie of Jesse is amazing and he's savage. And yeah, he's a great patriot. It's all a lie, guys. It's all a lie. You were lied to by a fraud and a predator. Absolutely. I got I got calls from a lot of people, as you can imagine, friends from uh, congregation members at Bond. And the main thing that they were getting a lot of them is they most most of them believe me who knew me. But what they mostly, what I mostly got heard from them is shock. Yeah. Uh, uh, just absolute shock because they had him on a certain position and they couldn't, it was like being, you say red pill. You can't wrap your mind around something because you had some idea in your mind that you believed was reality. It is not reality. And there's no way that you want to let go of that. Yeah. Yeah. The truth makes people angry. There's a saying that the, uh, the weather vane anger is the weather vane of truth. And these people are angry right now in many ways because they probably deep down know that it's true, that they've been lied to, and they don't want to admit it. So anger is the outlet for that, to be angry, yes. not at Jesse, but at people revealing the truth to them. Absolutely. If it was, if, if they didn't believe it, they would be much more dismissive. Most of these people are not just like, oh, who cares, whatever. They're angry, right? Yes. That we would go after and expose their cult leader because it's yeah. true and they know it's true, on at yes. least on some level. You hit the nail on the head there, Anthony. It's anger that they really have, not so much indifference. Ironically, right, given what Jesse talks about yeah, so right. much. Exactly. Um, we got a little super chat from Vita Bruno, uh, 499. Thanks. I believe the victims, however, is their proof from the victims as far as their interactions. 
some of the victims are recent, there should be something. Yeah, Patrick, I think that you could definitely speak on this, that all these people, I mean, there, there's there, that, that these people were known around Bond, that these people are, that these people have the relationships that they say they have. I mean, a good grief in the documentary itself, for your credibility, I have Jesse saying to you, you are the smartest man, the smartest white man on this side of heaven. Yeah. yeah, he definitely knew you. It sounded like you had a relationship there, didn't it? That's pretty Every, darn good everybody, evidence. Everybody at the old congregation knows who I am. I'm no mystery to anybody. I've been around working there for 20 years, and every I've done everything you can do there. I was considered Jesse's right hand guy, pretty much. I was known to be. We were known to be uh, very good friends. Now Samuel uh, kind of completes the picture because almost everybody in the new congregation knows Samuel, the Mexican car wash boy. Uh, yep. He has credibility. Uh, I, hopefully credibility counts for something with people. Uh, he has credibility. So anybody that really knows us, I'm not saying every single person we know believes us, but a huge percentage of them do know us, do believe us. Jesse's own inability and absolute, he's running right now. He's scared. He's running on every angle of the internet and phone calls and his show that's possible that's in many ways, most people would interpret with common sense that these, that's guilty. It's an admission of guilt. Yeah. He refuses to address it. He refuses to confront it. He refuses to confess. He refuses to even deny it. Any of the allegations. Why? Any, any other public figure, Larry Elder, like I mentioned, any governor, uh, a, a huge one like a Donald Trump or something or a Don Jr., they would deny this immediately. They would have an attorney help them prepare a statement and put it out on behalf of Bond trying to giggle and laugh. Hoo -hoo, I don't take it seriously. Right. This is, this is nonsense. This is a predator who is, who is terrified right now and on, on the edge. And I'm going to push him to the edge of confessing or getting, ending up in court. This man is a predator and needs to go bankrupt. And, and why is it that the media, the larger media, who's, who's quite well, well aware of this story now, for the most yeah. part, is burying their heads in the sand. Is yep. it because he's black and they're afraid to, Say this about if this was a white uh, preacher, would they come out and, and put yeah. it up? Is if that... he was a Biden, if he was a Biden preacher, if it was Jesse Lee Jackson, they'd be all over it. Every oh, single Anthony, YouTuber Anthony, please, on the right. Please put up Oedipus's latest comment. And I want um, you to respond to it. One moment. Um, I think I found it. They only attack Jesse because they can get, no, they can't get away with it. That's Try this on Mark Dice or Ben Shapiro. They'd get sued immediately and they know it. Jesse's just as capable as, as any of those guys are. Why can't he do a lawsuit? He's got millions of dollars, I'm sure. Yeah. But this wasn't that wasn't that wasn't the comment though, Anthony. The comments was you guys complete keep conflating credibility with evidence. Two totally different things. Pick up a law book, fellas. I'd like you to testimony evidence. Testimony is, is evidence. Yes, yeah, testimony yeah. is evidence. That's right. That's right. You Credible stated very testimony is evidence. Credible you testimony stated is evidence. Yeah, it's not it's not in question that you had a relationship uh, business at least for 20 years or more with Jesse. Sounds like yeah, 20 years. You had you're claiming you had a 10 year sexual relationship with this man. Yeah. And this is you why wouldn't Jesse just sue you out of oblivion right now? Right. And just and silence you and, and all this stuff, right? Why doesn't he do anything? These people are dumb. These people all they're going to do is keep raising the bar, right? For evidence, 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 evidence. We'll get half a dozen affidavits sworn under oath and they'll say, oh, well, it's still not good enough because yeah. I wanted a blood sample and I saw movies where they had it and Jack Murphy was putting dildos up his butt on video. And that's how we knew these people are lazy. They're morally lazy and they're cowards and they refuse to understand basic facts, use common sense and use logic to look at this and say, this is really effing serious. And why isn't Jesse responding to this at all? Why is he hanging up phone calls on my girlfriend when she asked about this? Why is he attacking the credibility who asked basic questions? Why haven't you addressed the documentary? Why is he locking on chats on his channel? Are you kidding me? This is what a guilty person does. They run for the hills. Duh, duh. These hey, people are Anthony, put, put, up this, put up this video I just sent in chat, and then uh, I'm going to send another video to you as well. These are, this is from Bond. This is from Bond's YouTube. You can go look at it yourself. Here's another one. This is from Jesse Lee Peterson's YouTube. Uh, pulling it up right now. Is that yeah, you can pull up the first account? one first. Look, you just everybody look down there. Look at the YouTube channel. Look at the account. Who is that? And who is that? Yeah, with audio, with audio, audio too. Yeah, you can do it. Yeah. Be doing it well. 
said, you know, you got to swing like this. Right. But every time I went to swing the ball, it didn't really work for me that way. So it's kind of like that with, with, with the word of prayer for me. No, okay. But um, what I've noticed over the time is that using words sometimes has been very, very beneficial for me. When I hit a sticking point, I can't. Is there more to the clip I should play audio on? It's or? not just a clip. It's okay, just well, I just wanted to show that that's Patrick's voice. Okay, yeah, yeah, sure. There they are uh, together. There they are together. Another, and if, and if you didn't is, uh, think that they were friends for this is from what year? Uh, well, that, that that was later on probably once. To run that uh, off. About 2017-ish. Okay. There's another one from 2019. I mean, this is a couple years ago, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's – look – Guys, I've challenged Jesse to sue me. I've challenged Bond to sue me. If what I'm saying is lying, that these are that I support these guys, and I believe that there's a paper trail and that there's facts, that what they're stating fundamentally is factually true. Jesse could sue me, and I encourage him to do that if I'm lying. If these men are lying, he should put out a statement. He should hire an attorney. There's a reason their court system exists. There's a reason attorneys exist. Bond and Jesse Peterson definitely have, I'm sure, a relationship with some sort of attorney in California. There's no way that they've never had to talk to an attorney before. They, obviously, it's been on record that Jesse has sued certain people right. for, for restraining orders and whatnot. Frivolous. He's not some, <laughs> yeah, frivolously. He's not some dummy who doesn't know how to hire an attorney. He's not broke. Bond has money. They've taken money from people for a long time. For him not to do anything about this and just pretend like it's some big joke is sick. It's the sickness of a fraud and a predator who is scared, who should be scared. He should be scared. Maybe he'll go to jail. Or maybe he's going to get out, end up in civil court and lose bond. He deserves to lose bond. The whole thing is a cult and a fraud and is sick. It needs to end. You know, um, and that's been so hard for me to say over time because there's that part of me, that friend part of me, that's like, oh, I want bond to continue and everything. But realistically, I realize at a certain yeah. point they can't because the only people in, in the wings are, are people like Hake who are going to be another Jesse. Yep. Uh, it's not going to be an honest organization. It's going to be the same BS that, that's going on with Jesse, even if he was to, to, to give it to somebody else. Yeah. So I don't think they can go anywhere with it. it, let, it me, let me put it this way to people in a legal context. If this, if all these people were lying, if Church Militant was lying and they was some big scam and they were, had all this money being wired to them and everybody lied and everybody was paid off and it's all this massive criminal conspiracy – Jesse would have a very easy time suing these people for defamation and winning. It'd be a slam dunk and anybody would do it. Larry Elder, Mark Dice, Ben Shapiro, Ron DeSantis, whatever. Why isn't he doing anything? Because he's guilty. That's why they do this. They run. They run and run and run and run. They're crazy. Like Amber Heard. Amber Heard just got lost $10 million defamation suit, right? She did all these nasty things against uh, you know Johnny Depp. And what does she do? She just keeps lying. These people with personality disorders are crazy. It doesn't well, matter what you show and do to them. They just keep going. This is why I said, Anthony, that I think that his strategy will be to continue to lie, even if his universe shrinks, that he can still be mm -hmm. a king in a small universe, and oh. he would choose that. Yep. Well, I'm going to do everything I can to uh, make that pawn as small as possible <laughs> and uh, cause this guy a lot of... Um, headache by using freedom of speech and memes and art to <coughs> provoke and to mock him for the fraud that he is and to trigger all those little fans and help them in a way go through this emotional process. Some of them will never get through it. These are diehard people. Jesse could come out and confess tomorrow. He's been a fraud for 30 years. They would, for, he would just say, Oh, forgive me. And they'd forgive him. Right. Yeah. And, because, and, and keep paying the money because there is no, uh, there is no past. So, if, yeah. if he said that, then they would just forgive him, move on, and keep listening to his pronouncements. Yeah. Yep. Um, before we wrap up the show, it's been almost three hours. I did want to ask you, Joe, what your thoughts are. Uh, if Patrick, if you have comments as well. So, Joe, you mentioned we looked at it earlier on Church Militant. You guys have done a lot of investigations and documentaries and such reports on uh, Catholic priest predators and obviously now this Protestant pastor, Jesse Lee Peterson. Um, I don't know a lot about the stats, the statistics on these issues, but like how prevalent is it for any religious leader, Christian, Jewish, Muslim, Catholic, Orthodox, whatever? Like, are you guys familiar with this problem occurring even beyond Christianity? Because I don't know much about it other than when I grew up in the 90s, it became a problem on the news. Yeah, I mean, it, it, so there 
the the abuse that seems to be most common in the Catholic Church and in um, actually also the Hasidic Jewish community is uh, is homosexual predation. That seems to be the there was this uh, there was this report called the John Jay report. I think it came out in two thousand four. If I'm correct, I might be wrong on the date. I'm not sure, but it found that um, uh, the vast the 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 vast majority of priestly sex you know clerical sex abuse incidents were with men over the age of 13. So that technically that terminology does not refer to a pedophile. So the term pedophile priest is more of a media coined term. It's actually okay. a phoebophilia, which means attraction to post pubescent boys. And this is also a common problem within the homosexual community. Now there's, there's estimates that there's estimates and they're all wide ranging about what percentage of Catholic priests are gay, but they put it between I think it was 15 to 50 percent of all Catholic priests are gay. Wow. Whoa. Um, on top of that. And there, and this is because there were targeted actions that happened uh, under the, you know, some there was a woman named Bella Dodd who came out and actually did some um, uh, uh, testimony on this in the, uh, I believe it was the 1960s or 50s with uh, Archbishop Fulton Sheen. And um, what he said, what he what this woman told him was that she was a worker. She used to work for the Communist Party USA before returning to the Catholic faith. And she had helped recruit, uh, I think it was 1,100 uh, Catholic priests, many of which were homosexuals, into the Catholic hierarchy at that time. And a lot of them, she said, there's a lot of them, she said, became bishops and cardinals within the Catholic Church. So then you have this now um, kind of this homosexual network that exists within the church and that talks <laughs> that that really speaks to what's going on with a lot of these uh with a lot of these abuse cases in the catholic church a lot of people don't like to equate homosexuality and pedophilia because that 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 connection isn't nearly as strong as the connection between homosexuality and ephebophilia. But about 50, I think it's about about 52 percent of all homosexuals describe some sort of sexual abuse in their life. Wow. So, I mean, th these are the sorts of numbers that a lot of people are uncomfortable hearing, but there is yep. a correlation between homosexuality and abuse. So the, 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 the whole the whole idea is that homosexuals cannot reproduce and therefore they pr reproduce through a cycle of abuse. In most cases, that's how more gay people were made. Yep. Yeah, I, I grew up, uh, as I said to you guys, I think before the show, I grew up in the Catholic Church, and uh, I was an altar boy. I was the head of the altar boys one year, actually. Uh, I worked at the church rectory for a little while. I saw where the priests live, and I saw how some of them, how how some of them live. And I can tell you, I knew of at least a couple of them that were doing some stuff they shouldn't have been doing. And I could see how it was affecting, they were, you know, they were affecting people close to me, let's put it that way. And um, I knew that these guys had some real problems and the church has not dealt with this. And instead it's become worse and worse and worse. That's why I was so happy to hear what you guys were doing, Joseph, because my experience, yeah. With, yeah. My experience with the Catholic church is that they were letting this kind of stuff go on and on and on yeah. and not doing anything about it. Yeah, that's not us. Yeah, Church I, Militant has been on the front lines of this fight for, you know, over a decade, uh, maybe even two decades. I'm not I can't particularly remember, but that's my point. We've been at the forefront of this. We call out not only the people that are engaging in um, engaging in predatory behavior, but the people covering it up in the hierarchy, the people yeah. that are too cowardly to go out and speak out against it. And, yep. it, and it doesn't just end there either. We also call out the cowardly bishops who will refuse, who, who won't deny, you know, who won't deny pro-abortion politicians communion as the faith actually commands in the catechism. Yes. We are real Catholics. We believe the faith as it is written in tradition. That's the end of the discussion for us. We believe all the teachings of the Catholic Church. You can't be a Catholic in good standing unless you believe every single dogma and doctrine of the Catholic faith. That is not a negotiation in this church. And it's been allowed by, you know, for decades by these feckless hierarchs that do not do not care about the faith and in many cases don't even believe the faith. Yep. I mean, yep. there's bishops that have said they don't they, they don't care about the deposit of faith in the Catholic Church. I was like, really? Well, you're a bishop, aren't you? A lot of these people are not good 
people in these positions. And, and as Catholics, yeah, and we're it, free it, to it, say that, by the way, as a Catholic. You're free to call out this cover-up. You're free to call out this sex abuse. Exactly. Yeah. You hit on something there, Joseph. It's not, and even Jesse has said stuff like this before, when he's been accused of being a cult leader. He said, well, what about the cult followers? And he actually spoke some truth there, because as bad as a cult leader is, and he's bad, he can't do what he's going to do without followers. Yeah. So as soon as people start manning up or womaning up and call people out, at least question them. If you don't yeah. know, fine, at least question people strongly and don't back down when they start calling you a beta or when they make some side crack at you or whatever. Yeah. Make a comment, stick by it, and don't let him put the question back on you. Demand an answer. Don't just let him come back because that's what Jesse's a master at. He will yeah. bring it back to you, and then he'll make you the problem. Yep. He, in fact, most of his career is made up of flipping things back on other people, in, um, in uh, getting them to get angry, or at least tempting them to become angry. And then as soon as that person becomes angry, he discredits them. Yep. He, he hits them first. So what they, a wicked, what a wicked woman. Yeah. And then, no matter what they said, no longer has value because Jesse has convinced people that whoever gets angry is the loser. And then that person is looked on as a, a oh, you're angry. In the, in the church of Jesse, you can't, you can't break that commandment, right? Even though it's called, you know, it's, it's called conditioning is what it is. It's it called is conditioning. conditioning. Even yeah. though Jesse himself has broken that because you cannot mm-hmm. love your brother if you help your brother commit adultery. You, that's not okay. love, obviously. So he's yeah. the whole thing is, again, the whole thing is a fraud in, in, in so many words. Well, that's the this thing, a, though. I mean, this that's that that's the thing, Patrick. Is that you, the, it seems to me that the only friends Jesse has left are the people that were making testimony against him in this video. They're mm-hmm. the only ones that actually have his best mm-hmm. interest at heart. They're the only ones that are commanding him to be better. They're the ones calling for him to repent and step down from his ministry, which he clearly can't control given his given his inability to be chased. Yeah. I mean, these are all things that people have to be considering when it comes to the fitness of some of the fitness let's, of somebody to lead an organization. Let, let's pause real quick on something. Why didn't Rev, Reverend Jesse Lee Peterson date and get married, married, let's legally married or whatever, over the past 40, 35, 40 years? Why didn't that happen? Well, he's just some he's just so terrible at dating. He's just some massive incel. He couldn't find a woman to love and build a family with. What does the Bible say, right? Be fruitful, multiply or something. Isn't this God's commandment? Jesse didn't care about this. He doesn't want to have sex and stuff with women. I mean, this is There was a lady, uh, Anthony, there was a lady that he uh, was going to get married to years ago, but they uh, broke it off in the engagement and that was it. So that's the closest I think he got to marry that I'm aware of. Well, I'm sure they didn't have sex because having sex out of wedlock's a sin and you could burn to hell for that, according to Jesse, right? Yeah. Yeah, So, I, I mean, this... Why didn't he never really is whole? It's just so it's such a huge coincidence that this guy being incredibly accused by four or five accusers who knew him for years of acts that in some cases border on criminal, depending on uh, on California Constitution, California Code. Uh, really, this guy just happened to be a not gay Christian pastor hiding in the closet who didn't have sex and get married for 40 years or 30 years. This is this is beyond the pale. Like this, this is just on a, a basic. You could write this out on a on a logic sheet or something. Like <laughs> the chance, the chances of the, the chances right. of these butthurt beta males being right. That Jesse's innocent. It's some giant hit job, and the DNC did it through shell corporations paying off church militant. These people are stupid. They are stupid, and they're in denial. The problem. And I'm a lot less. I'm a lot less forgiving than you guys. <laughs> uh, the problem that Jesse's had. One of the problems Jesse's going to have now is. The more we speak about this and the more things that you see that are not congruent. In other words, you yeah. know, Jesse, and you see things that kind of stick out, but you kind of let them go. The more, mm-hmm. the more of those things that add up and uh, the more people see that, that they may see something that's not congruent in their mind. Now they'll know because we've been talking about it. Wait a minute. There's something that pops up. Don't dismiss the thing in your mind that pops up. As soon as you look at that and be willing to just be objective about it, his uh, reign starts to end because his life has been built up with many such lies. And after a while, you can't hold those up if people are willing to look at them as what they really are. And, and look, even most of the fans, even most of the fans uh, of, of his, you know, on Cozy.TV that watch the that watch his streams on Cozy.TV. I mean, there's been a couple polls, Ethan, Ralph, Ethan both Ethan Ralph and Baked Alaska did polls 
on Jesse. And both of them had the same result. About 44% believed and about, you know, I think it was 54, 55%, 55% said that, uh, 55% said that, um, that Jesse, that Jesse wasn't gay. So, I mean, that's from one documentary, that's, that's a sizable number of people that have been completely convinced by this, even among his own audience members. That's very early. Sworn defenders. That's yeah. very, very early on too. That's right. I mean, what people don't realize, let me show you guys something from another fraud expo. a guy named uh, Donovan Sharp. So mm -hmm. I did a major documentary, but it's about three hours long. It's called The Truth About Donovan Sharp. I gave it in March, 2021. So about, what is that, 14, 15 months ago, something like that. This is his Patreon. It was his main source of income. He was making thousands of dollars a month on it. He had about 1,100 patrons when I released the documentary. And before that time, this is a one-year timeline. It only had certain options, as you can see on the picture. His Patreon was only going up for years, slowly going up, like a YouTube channel or a Twitter account or really any uh, online platform, right? If you're making content, you slowly pick up fans over time. Unless there's a major problem, like you quit, you stop making content, you're exposed as a homosexual, whatever, right? I exposed this guy for being a liar and a fraud. And if you put it out to 15 months, so at 12 months, he had a 44% drop in patrons, 44.7. At 15, it's about 60%. This guy is cratering. And this is his main source of income was patron, Patreon. Yeah, excuse me. The same thing, generally speaking, is going to happen to Jesse. The truth spreads slowly, lies spread fast. So the truth is slow, almost like a poison in a weird kind of ironic way. Yeah. And over time, this is going to happen to Jesse as this documentary spreads through word of mouth, through SEO, through social media, through WhatsApp, through text messages, phone calls, meetings, church, bond, whatever. The more Jesse gets confronted about it and runs away and hides, the consequence is going to be financial and it's going to be reputational and rightly so. He is going to lose a lot of money over the next uh, 12 to 24 months and it's going to be a permanent hit to bond. And I hope they go bankrupt. They deserve it. He, I think this whole thing was built on fraud and he can burn in hell for all I care. Just he, speaking as a figure of speech. Yeah, I understand. He, he clearly, I, I believe, again, he's going to keep doing what he's doing. He's made a lot of money, obviously, over the years. And who knows how much, but he, he'll be able to live comfortably no matter what himself. Um, uh, one thing I want to say, maybe I'm reiterating for people who are coming in late though, but uh, obviously, I want Jesse to repent, come clean yeah. about what he's done, yeah. step down, right? Yes. yes. But the other, the other thing is I want to repeat here for people that may have come in late. Part of what I did to start with had to do with seeing if there were other people out there. I still believe there are others out there. Okay? Yeah. And I, and I think there – I don't know how many there are, but I believe there are other people I've definitely suspected of something going on uh, way back when or more recently – but hopefully those people that wondered in some way or whatever on the fence or for some reason said he's he's doing great work. I don't want to mess anything up. I think it's really time for you to man up or uh, I was going to say a woman up, but women are not applying here. Man up at this point and do the right thing. Yes, it's time. Step up, guys. I know there's more. A lot of the people, the speakers I know who knew Jesse from our events, they say the same thing. There's no way it's just four or five guys. Yeah. It's at least, you know, when you ask a woman, for example, just to put it in dating context, how many men have you slept with? If she tells you, you know, nine, it's probably not nine, right? Women, men and women do this both. Men tend to exaggerate their partner counts in general, right? In a secular perspective out in the culture, women tend to downplay it. it the reality is going to be almost always different. So we've seen only four or five people come, men come forward. I have no doubt there's another 10 to 15, maybe more, maybe a lot more. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if there was 50. Who knows? That's at the high end of my estimate. Yeah, I, I don't I also think. I also think that James Hake owes us a statement. Oh, yeah. Just, just, Hermes, just too. Hermes. Yeah. yeah. I Hake mean, Hermes, Hermes, Hermes sure. I think that you sh I, I think that you should make a make a statement as well. I don't know if he had to sign a, a, an NDA or anything like that. But but well, if Hermes, if Hermes gets caught in a deposition, if this goes to court, his NDA won't matter. He might have an NDA. Right. He probably has an NDA. Patrick might know more about um, how bond operates. But yeah, if he goes in deposition, it ain't going to matter. Yeah. So, I mean, and that's the thing. So, so when, when these options present themselves and you want to clear, clear your reputation and you want to clear, you know, all these, you want to clear yourself of all these allegations that are floating around. I mean, it's like, like if Ermius didn't know about this stuff, fan, fantastic. I, I love the guy. And then, but then when push comes to shove, he ought, he ought to do what he can to get the truth out. Yep. I, th I think the people, uh, 
all my friends owe themselves. They owe Jesse. They owe people who may be out there still. They owe the, I believe they, I agree with you guys. They owe them to come forward and do what you do the right thing. Well, they need to live true to what they profess to believe. If, if, even if they believe what Jesse tells them in some respects, never mind other elements of Christianity and being a man, masculinity, you need to have courage and stand up for the truth. This is, this is a basic element of being a man is having honor and integrity and being a what man of your word. You think the truth is important? You think it's important to have courage and to be a man and be an alpha male? Then man the F up. Speak up. Step up to the plate. Just like these guys did. They're not cowards. They got in front of a camera and told the truth. It's, e it's easy to say you're a man, but it's a lot harder, it seems, to be a man, right? Oh, yeah. Talk is cheap. Action's expensive. Yeah. They, all they, they're going to they're gonna chest beat behind cartoon characters on Twitter. No, the guys who know this happen in real life, they're watching and they're trying to figure out what to do. I'm not trying to be mean to you, beat up on you, but these guys are right. You need to man up, man the F up, be a man. You talk about being a man, you talk about, you know, all this being Christian, being having courage. Jesus was your ultimate moral example, in my understanding. He had tremendous courage to, to live and die for what he believed in. And you're going to sit here and know the truth about Jesse being a predator and a homo and let Jesse get away with this massive fraud in public? Hell no. No, speak up. Yeah, Someone commented I mean, earlier, it's embarrassing for Christians that an atheist like me has more moral courage <laughs> than these these alleged Christians and Catholics. I agree. And stuff. I agree. Cowards. Cowards. Yeah, I, I, I salute I salute you and your work, you know, helping help helping spread the word on this whole thing because yeah. it really does show and that, that really does show an aspect of good character. And it shows that you. that that you that you appear at least to be a man of goodwill. The thing yeah. is, I don't even I can't even say this this whole experience with Jesse has been so bad. Is that I can't even say I can't even say I know you're a man of goodwill anymore after this because we thought we knew we thought we knew Jesse was a man of goodwill yeah. Yeah. and look what wound up happening. But it appears to me, from my perspective, sitting on the stream talking to you, seeing the action that you've taken, you did the yeah. courageous you did the courageous thing, you did the brave yeah. thing, you did the you you did the thing that has earned me a lot of respect for you and what you and what you've done on this whole thing and, and and all the people that aren't speaking out there's still time you can still go out and do this that's right men do not back down in the face of adversity they stand up they conquer their fears they conquer their doubts and they move forward i yes. agree and, and and the same for me anthony i'm wondering if you're really an atheist because uh, I am. There, there is a a, a uh, love on some level that you have for ultimate truths. Yes. And ultimate truths. I'm an I'm an I'm an objectivist, so that's in the Ayn Rand tradition. A lot of modern objectivists are not. It's actually a lot like um, Catholicism and other elements of Christianity. Objectivism is a formal systemic uh, systematic philosophy, and there's a big schism in it between kind of like you guys, the traditional Catholics yeah. versus these modern liberals and stuff who don't really care about abortion. Objectivism is very similar. It has millions of people to follow it that are very much into it, like me. Yeah. And I'm I'm the old school kind, the traditional objectivist when Ayn Rand was alive. And that means a strict and an absolute ultra aggressive adherence to reason and reality. And when I see frauds and predators who are lying and twisting reality and twisting the facts and twisting people's minds, it makes me sick and it makes me very, very angry, particularly when they lie to my face. When these people are paying me money, when I'm buying them flights, expensive flights and hotels for my company and my events, it makes me effing mad and I hate them for it. And I am justified, I believe, in my philosophy for hating Jesse. Now, if you have a different philosophy for how you're going to conduct yourself as a I man, <laughs> that's fine. That's fine. But this is mine and I stand behind it. And I'm pissed at this guy and it makes me sick. It makes me sick that he preys on these hurt, wounded men. These guys went to him for help, right? Just like Samuel did, a bunch of other guys who were molested as kids and stuff. And this yeah. sick F... Sick. I'm, I'm used to cursing a lot more. I'm really trying to hold it back for you guys. I appreciate it. That's awesome. No, I love it. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, my grandma was my grandma was my maternal grandmother from my mom's side was the closest thing I had to a parent growing up, and she was a devout Catholic. I watched her pray every night, usually to my grandfather who was dead from esophagus cancer, every night, but also other prayers and Catholicism for three hours a night, two to three hours a night, every night, never missed a night ever, 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 ever until she died of bone cancer at 91 years old back in 2011. Wow. This is woman was the example for me morally and philosophically and spiritually. My cousins get mad at me for not being a Catholic. I call them Sinos, Christians in name only, or Catholics yeah. in name only, because they don't think divorce is a big deal when my other cousin gets divorced. So I call them a bunch of frauds and they get mad at me and stuff. 
But my other friends call me, not my cousins, but friends say I'm more of a Christian than they are because I actually stand up for what I believe in. I stand up for the more difficult elements of what Catholics are supposed to believe. That's why I like church militant. That's why yeah. I like what you guys did. This is what Christians are supposed to be. It's supposed to be hardcore and believe and support the truth and the Bible and the work, the work of Jesus and God. These people don't. They're a bunch of beta males pretending to be, oh, yeah, savage, Jesse Lee Peterson, amazing. No, beta males. <laughs> Well, I am. I, I, I pray for both you guys, and yes, I'm still praying for you, Anthony, that uh, to keep all of your courage, but to hopefully overcome any of the anger that is it would hurt you or, or anybody. Sure. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to hurt myself or anyone else uh, in the process. I just want to see Bond go yeah. bankrupt for by exposing the truth. So, but I, I, like I said, I appreciate it, and it's come a long way for me because, again, I've had this a, a personal relationship that's been. I've had to pull away and become more objective myself. If you talked about objectivism, yeah. I've had to become objective in what is love on my part versus what is just closeness that, that Jesse helped foster a sense of closeness to keep me close to him so that I wouldn't uh, speak up strongly against him. Yeah. Ultimate manipulator, man, this guy. Yeah. And I just want to share one more story with people, you know, about Jesse. When Jesse was in the studio and you were talking about how Jesse could lie to your face, he lied to my, he lied to my face too. We were actually doing a, a vortex that day. And one of the, one of the topics talked up about the bishops covering up homosexual predation, uh, covering, you know, or the bishops protecting homosexuals, this, that, and the other. And I was like, isn't it just disgusting Jesse, you know, and he was standing next to me because I we were standing there watching Michael Voris on set reciting his vortex for the day, recording it. And I was like, isn't it just awful? And he's like, oh, it's just, it, it, it's a mess. It's a mess. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. And I'm like, and, yeah. and, then, and, then, and then I find this out. I was like, it's, it's just lying. It's what a just, mess. Yeah. What a pig. Lying what a pig. Dude. Well, one, one, of, one, of the, one of the guys, by the way, uh, Brian, uh, confronted Jesse one day with other guys. And said, uh, he was talking to Jesse about the things he was doing, how wrong they were. And all Jesse could say was, amazing. And Brian said, no, it's really not amazing. It's disgusting, Jesse. It's disgusting. And I, and I love that Brian said that because Brian's one of those guys, and there are other guys too um, that are out there, like people like Jack and other people out there that have actually wanted to meet with Jesse and give him the benefit of the doubt. Robert's father, uh, uh, John, uh, did the same thing. In fact, John was pounding me for a while. He was all over me saying, why are you being so hateful? Why are you doing this to Jesse? Jesse's telling, telling all these truths. As soon as John got a meeting with Jesse, with Robert, Brian, uh, and, and Brian, they found out that as soon as they asked him a question, Jesse went on the offense. And, and it end, ended up yelling at them and kicking him out of the bond house. A ever since that day, John... Uh, understood exactly what I was doing and just said he realized that day that Jesse was pure evil. Yeah. I've stated that he's evil. I know that that doesn't have the same meaning uh, to you guys because I'm not a Christian. I'm not saying it from oh, a it biblical means, perspective. It means the same. I, I read it loud and clear. Yeah, I think he's. I think there's a significant and a real serious degree of evil in what he's done and in his actions. And to the extent you can judge a man by his actions rather than the BS hot air that comes out of his mouth, this man has conducted evil in his life for a long period of time. Every Christian should be really, maybe anger isn't the right word, they should be disgusted by this. They should speak out against it. Orthodox, Catholic, Protestant, Mormon, Jehovah's Witness, whatever. This is sick. And if you, you have a public presence at all, or if you had any awareness or knowledge of this, you need to speak up. The only, Yeah, I agree. The only thing I'm not sure of is what the percentage is. It may be 100% that evil has a hold on Jesse, Sure. Yeah, maybe there may be a percentage or two in there that is still fighting the evil or trying to get away from that. That may be true. I'm not God. I don't know what the exact percentage is. So yeah. I don't know if he's 100 percent evil, but I know that evil has a hold on him yes, and sir. he doesn't understand what's going on. Yeah. And there's no way for any of us to know. None of us are God. Right. None of us are mind readers, but we can only judge his actions, which is really what you should judge people on. Right. And the manosphere we have is saying to ignore what she says and watch what she does. To understand a woman, and particularly if you want to make sure you're not getting played or something or being defrauded in some way or getting cheated on, watch your actions. The yes. words can often be, this is how magicians operate. They, they talk yes. to you and kind of misdirect you. It's the actions that they don't want you to see that you need to pay attention to. Jesse yeah, manipulates his people in a lot of different ways like we've just, show, just got, uh, shown on the show today. 
watch the fruit on the tree, right? As they say in, in, in Christianity, uh, fruit, no pun intended, but watch the fruit on the tree here. Yeah. Guys, we've been going for uh, almost yeah. three and a half hours. We should probably uh, wrap up. I really appreciate both of you guys' times. Thank you, um, man. Really appreciate you guys and all you've done. I really yes. admire what you guys have done. Oh, I'm just getting warmed up. This is a <laughs> war, man. It, yeah, yeah it's, it's going on. And, it, it, and as you said, it may just be the beginning. Yes. Yeah. Um, so do, last words. To... Yeah, I just want to speak to any of the victims that feel like that, that they shouldn't come out and do this, that you really should come out and do this. And all the young people that are following, you know, all, all the young people that are following Jesse Lee Peterson, just take just, just just take a second to think about this. Do your critical thinking. Come to come come to these uh, come, do the proper analysis, essentially. Do that proper analysis. Use your God given reason. Use your use your <laughs> use your potential reach your potential and say something come to the argument on your own take the evidence weigh it against the drawbacks see if this take the puzzle pieces see if the puzzle pieces fit together and then based off of that go forth and spread the truth yes amen don't and, and the last thing i would say is never put any i sound like jesse with these never statements but i'm going to use never here never put another man or woman for that matter on a place above you or even below you um well he says that specifically because that's what he wants them to do it disarms them my uh, cognitive well, psychologically i don't, mean, to do I don't that. mean it in that way i mean it in the way that like I did with Jesse. when yeah. you put somebody in a position you really do he says a lot of things but he doesn't mean a lot of some, what he says yeah. I, mean, I mean this here if you put someone in a position for instance in jesse's case above you the way i did when he became my counselor and then turned on me um, you will not see clearly. And so everything that comes up that should be a red flag, you will explain away in your mind. Armand has talked about this. Some of the guys have talked about it. Everyone knows what I'm talking about who've been associated with this. You will put it away in your mind and say it didn't happen. So I'll never put someone on a pedestal and always be willing to look at what is the reality in front of you. As, as Joseph said, I'm saying it a slightly different way, but you guys are all saying the same thing. Be willing to look at, you say, objectivism. Be willing to be objective and to look at what the reality actually is, and and you'll be fine. Yes. They're There's terrified of the savior. reality. There's only one yeah. Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And, and and don't, yeah, that's another one, too. The Savior is not man. We can admire each other, but we're not each other's saviors. Yep. I do want to give a final comment specific to what you just said, Patrick, about, because Jesse, I do, and I've heard him say this even recently. You know, he said it for many years, like, don't put me on a pedestal. I'm not a leader, blah, yes. blah, blah. And apparently he's even d distancing himself from being a reverend lately. Yeah. Something Samuel's been talking about. It's interesting. So I want to point out to the guys who are still kind of in anger or denial mode in their grieving process for these, for the truth here that we've that's been exposed is that Jesse does these things. And this is how psychopaths and predators operate. They say these things specifically so that it confuses the target yes. because they'll take what is objectively good advice you know, trust your own mind, trust your own judgment, whatever, right? You know, don't put anyone else on a pedestal. That makes them, it disarms them from when they put Jesse on a pedestal, they don't realize it. They do. So it, it, it's very predatory. It's very sick and it's very confusing. And the average person doesn't want to believe it. You yes. don't trust, you know, don't trust, trust, but verify. Don't trust anybody, right? Trust yourself. And then they'll just spew whatever nonsense they want. And like, whoa, that guy said, trust myself. Yes. I yes, have to yes, believe yes. him. Like, Yes, it's like man, I, I, this knew, is I, totally I knew you were Anthony. I knew you were onto something. I knew that you had experience in your life yeah. before before we had this conversation today because of the things that you had said. One yeah. last thing for me on the church. Sure. Um, Jesse was calling himself Reverend. Uh, that's the way um, you get a church. I mean, this is public records. It's the way he got a church. Call himself a Reverend, a minister of Jesus Christ. So yeah. you got a, a 501c3 religious nonprofit organization, okay, otherwise known basically as a church. And yeah. so that's the way uh, by calling himself a, a reverend. So if he wants to say now, don't call me reverend, then he also needs to strip the church away from him that he got by calling himself a reverend. You can't yeah. have it both ways. I really don't think he's a Christian at all, not even from a um, heretical perspective in theology. I don't think he's I don't think he believes in Jesus at all. He's more of an atheist than I am, probably. 
<laughs> like I'm not playing guys. I mean, I mean, in all honesty, he's not, he's not, he's just from our definition, not a Christian at all. Samuel told me uh, the other day that uh, uh, in talking with Jesse, um, that, that he mentioned something about the Bible that family Samuel started needed to read the Bible more. And he mentioned a couple of truths and Jesse laughed at that. Yeah. And that's, that's not uncommon. I, I don't believe, I believe Jesse does not fear God, which is the beginning of wisdom. And if you don't even fear God, um, you don't believe in God. That's for sure. Yeah, I think it's all a front. It's literally his, uh, his, he chose it for whatever reason. He chose Christianity and the Christian Bible to a lesser capacity than Jesus and God and the Christian religion in general. He uses it as a cover to build a cult. It really, that's all it is. It's a mask. He doesn't I mean, care yeah, about he, it. He does he doesn't that. Believe he does in these- it. He does these Bible thumper. It was a Bible thumper Thursday segments where he yes. makes fun of people yes. who actually practice the faith in its fullness. And, well, I'm sure, and, I, and I'm sure he has the same to say about Michael Horace, by the way. Well, that's trounced him in that debate back then. Right. That's bait, though. He does this to bait people in right. on those topics. It's the really only spiritual predatory. authority is Jesse. The only spiritual authority yes. is Jesse. And that's yep. not the Bible. You can't be. Don't be a Bible thumper. You know all this stuff. Yeah. It, it's 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 just it's nonsense it's all and this to is make a, sure that he has total control over everything that you do and that's a mortal sin in christianity that's why the mormons are so uh controversial among other christians because they have a prophet after jesus this is a big big no-no in christianity right by the mm-hmm. bible yeah and that's kind of how jesse plays himself he's like a line of a mormon yeah. one of our speakers is a friend of mine is a mormon and i asked him what is what the mormon official relationship is with the old testament and the new testament and he went into it and he basically said to me, and I think this is accurate by their uh, religion and Mormonism or the, the Church of Latter-day Saints, whatever they call it. He said that basically Joseph Smith is their line of authority, a new prophet to God and understanding Jesus and even the old Bible. That's what he told me. That's very similar in a way to now you guys can think whatever you want about Mormonism and their what they do. I know a lot of Christians are very, they don't even consider them Christians, but this is very similar to what Jesse does now. Right, not 200 years ago. Now, using a 501c3 religious nonprofit in California, it's sick. It's effed up, and it's got to go. Well, the Bible, the Bible itself uh, says, uh, "Call no man a teacher." Or, 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 well, I might be getting dangerous territory with Joseph here. Call, but call no right. man. It says, "Call no man father." Is what father, you're talking about, and it was, and, and and it was, it wasn't. Yeah, that that passage references. Like he was referring to God, call no other man God. It was a reaffirmation of the first commandment. It's not saying like, don't call your dad father. It wasn't saying you can never use the word father ever, well, but it's yeah. saying that God the father is your heavenly father. Yeah, my, my main point here is to say the teacher in Christianity is the Holy Spirit, is, is the true teacher, right? So what the problem is if, if a man gets in the way of that and becomes the source, he's basically making him the source instead of God. Yep. Yeah, like I would partially, I would still partially disagree with that. Obviously, the Holy Spirit works through people, and and people can say truths, and people can preach truths, and people yeah. can be given the authority through you know divinely inspired, given divine divinely granted authority to say things in a way that is infallible and approved. Well, yeah, we're, we're, you guys are talking truth today. Right. You guys are saying things today that are true. That yeah. thank that thank God rings true with me. And with other people, we can recognize the truth when we hear it. Well, I hope more people start recognizing the truth. Yeah, um, they will. I'm going to make sure of it. I've, I've been through this, this. So the Jesse is like the third or fourth major fraud I've gone after with videos and helping out and newsletters and putting my reputation and my business on the line and memes, especially these things work. They work slowly. They're powerful. A picture says a thousand words. Well, a meme says about 10,000 because it's funny and it's savage and I'm the best. I got the best Photoshop guys. I got the best ideas. It works. And this stuff is going to be, I'm a thorn in his side, the size of a kitchen knife. Like this is not, I'm not going away and he's going to get, he's going to be in a financial pain from this by weaponizing the truth and exposing the truth. And I'm going to keep harping on it. And I'm super, super persistent. I told Jesse over text, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you guys, I, one of the last things I said to him over text is, you, you, what did I say to him? You effed with the wrong white boy. You're going to burn for this. You sound like a I told Clint Eastwood in Gran Torino. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, guys, let's wrap up. Church, 
Yeah, just one statement. Church Militant is not backing down on the validity of this report. It doesn't deny the validity of the report in any capacity. Ever, all of our all of our reporting has been honest. We are not trying to hide anything. We were not paid off by anybody. There is nothing going on along those lines at all whatsoever. This report is 100% ver- is was 100% verifiable. You can go watch it for yourself at churchmilitant.com. 21 Studios has it posted up. Amazing disgrace. Do it. Watch it. Get all the evidence that you need, which is well over enough to believe this. Yes. Our, your video, Joseph, in my opinion, was from God. Okay? You guys are the ones that happened to come across this at the time that you did uh, and did a beautiful job with it. I, I look at that as a God thing. It was purely by chance. It was purely by chance, too, for us. I mean, the day after he had left our studio, after that Why Aren't You Catholic special, we saw an email from Martin Francis, yeah. I think it was. Was he the one that sent the email to us? Patrick, I, I think it was him. I can't remember yeah. if it was that guy, if yeah. it was specifically yeah. him or not. But yeah. one of them said, this guy is doing really this sort of him. stuff. And all of everybody in the studio gathered around when the email was opened around yeah. Michael Voris and their jaws were on the floor. Yep. Yeah. And yeah. and thank God you guys, as a figure of speech, I don't mean to insult your, your faiths, but thank God you guys had the courage and the balls, frankly, to step up and do something. It takes, it took real manpower and flights, I'm sure, and editing real hours and money to produce this someone it wasn't enough for patrick to do it on his own with blog posts and the victims individually they needed a real organization to get behind this uh instead you know producer and editing and an attorney review whatever like you guys are not playing and i'm not playing either and if jesse wants to sue me bring it on i'm not playing I worked These guys several in the weekends chat. to make this. I, I worked several weekends to make this stuff yeah. really happen. Yeah. And you know what? I'm, ha- I'm I, I couldn't. I can't be more proud of the work that I put out. Me too. Right? And, and, and I'm not backing. And and, and and Jesse can know this for eternity. I ain't backing down either. Amen. Yeah, neither is Church Militant. And, and yeah. neither am I. And neither are the others. Yep. So. And you guys, you guys, let's hopefully close it here. Church Militant, like me, you guys even went more detailed than I did. I'd ask for something just from a business perspective. You guys went through due diligence uh, right up to the last minute waiting for clarification. Do you deny this? Can we add anything to the documentary based on a statement from you? You got stonewalled. It's like I got stonewalled over text, over email, even I got confirmation it was received. He's been stonewalling people in public. They're hiding and running for the hills. Guys, it's true. This is all sick. It's serious. This guy is a predator fraud, and it's not funny. The memes are funny. The truth is not. There's, there, amen. There's never been a the level of, uh, what's the word? Microscope focus on what is going on here with Jesse and the stuff he's been up to until this right. point today. Yes. Well, you guys started. You know, I started way back when, but you guys took it to another level, Joseph, and gave it credibility. Yeah. And now, Anthony, with you coming on with this the way you are. It's never gotten to this level before. This is historic. It really is. It's it's snowballing is what's happening. You got you have your own little channel. You have your blog. You got hooked up with Church Militant and other victims. They then produced a professional documentary. I got wind of it through some of our speakers who were very concerned by it. Independent of me, I didn't find it. They sent it to me. I never knew anything about you guys. And so now I was able to publish it along among my channels and stuff. I've been sharing it, making memes, statements, newsletters. It's spreading to other channels. The biggest channel I've seen cover it now uh, is a black YouTuber, and he's got 700 and something thousand subscribers. Other channels have had 100,000, 200,000, 300,000. So it's spreading to the news, I know, as well. The Daily Beast is aware of it. They might do a piece on it. Uh, they're like a hit, you know, left wing yeah, organization. Hit, yeah. Who cares? The enemy of the enemy is their friend in this case. This man is a fraud. He's a right-wing grifter in America first. He's a grifter in Christian circles. He's a grifter in the manosphere. He needs to be exposed and cleansed with the truth. He needs to repent and close up shop and go bankrupt. Adios. And, every, and everyone involved ought to just get rid of him. Yeah, that's right. That's right. It's, hey, woman. You guys are shocking me today. If, if this was me a few months ago or whatever it was, the things that you just said are all true. To me, they're all yeah. true, but they would have shocked me a little ways back, even when I knew and was doing the stuff I was doing, because I was still that connected uh, mentally. Yeah. But uh, I tell you, I've gotten to another stage now, thank God, uh, yeah. where I can see the truth about things. Yep. All right, guys, I appreciate you. both your time. We you should did. wrap up. Yeah, hey, let's keep going. Um, not on the stream, on the stream, but with the pushing the truth. Yep. Joseph, thank you for your time. Thanks to Church Milton and Michael Voris for uh, you know helping out with everything from the documentary to approving the interview. 
Pat, appreciate your time. Keep doing what Thank you're doing. You. I'm sure thanks we'll stay in contact. Me, right yep. on. Yeah. Everyone, and to the viewers, thanks for tuning in, commenting, super chatting. Make sure you hit the like button and then leave a regular comment to help the video. A regular comment helps it go viral and get more traction to make wake more people up to what's going on here. A comment is worth like 10 likes. So leave a regular comment, share it on you know Twitter, or whatever you want. I appreciate it. Right. Both of you, thanks again. Everyone else, I'll see you probably next Saturday on the Redman Group. Thanks so much. You God guys. bless you.